There we Where go. did you post it? Uh, so it's right now it's on mine and then I'm going to share it over on the fastball specialist. Oh, okay. I'm share it on shows up. I, I can always just you know, share it with me. I can't like stream this onto Twitter, can I? Like I think after, thing? after it's recorded, I think maybe. Yeah, oh, okay. I, I'll, I'll upload it to uh, YouTube as well. So if you want to share it out there. That'll oh, okay. Because I know each platform has its own thing now, really. So. All right, I'm going to just share it on mine so anyone can share it off of mine if they want. And uh, all right, I'm going to put my other mic on. So let me know how this sounds because I got to go to the other side of my drawing space here. Uh, See, I have this other page that I never use, <laughs> but it always comes up first. So can you guys hear me all right? Yeah, yeah, perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Okay, let's do this. Let's lower the let's lower the uh, the cage. Let's do it. Bang! All right. <laughs> what do we do? We just roll <laughs> Batman or something? Yes. All right. I'm going to introduce you. Here we go, guys. For the four of us in attendance and the dozen watching from home, it's time. The fastball special is proud to present Sketchelmania Five: Thirty Days of Fight. I'm sorry about that. In this corner, making his debut and weighing in at 435 pounds, hailing from Seattle, Washington, USA, by parts unknown down under, Mr. Big Ben Templesmith. Welcome Hi. to the show, Hello. Ben. Hi. Now I'm a shy. <laughs> and in this corner, weighing in at 175 pounds, hailing from Oakville, Ontario, Canada, in his fifth consecutive appearance, Mike the Viking Ruth. Welcome back. Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining us tonight. <laughs> and in this corner, weighing in at 275 pounds, hailing in from Stony Creek, Ontario, Canada, Casey Space Pirate Parsons. Hello, everyone. <laughs> and yours truly, Slam Duncan. Welcome <laughs> to the show. I'm, I'm pumped for this, man. I'm so excited. I'm so excited, Ben. I've been a fan of your stuff for a long time. I love your I'm style, so sir. sorry to hear about your poor eyesight then. <laughs> <laughs> You're a way better style. people than me, man. <laughs> so but I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Yeah. So today we're going to be drawing Batman or a version of Batman, any version of Batman you'd like. So what, what, what made you guys come up with Batman as a subject? Anything in particular? I believe well, Mike said it's because we haven't done them yet. Yeah, we haven't done Batman it's yet, true. and uh, also Ben has drawn Batman professionally, and, and and I thought that was kind of a, you know, I think that that was kind of a cool thing to, to mention. So because uh, it was really awesome, he also got to draw the Spectre in the same comic book, which was pretty badass. So uh, yeah, so I thought that was pretty cool, and also Bat, he draws a, a crazy awesome Batman, so it just seemed like a good fit. Very cool. Well, thank you. So what are you guys uh, going to be using today in terms of mediums? Shall I go? Uh, I'll go first. Uh, sure. Tinted gray paper, pencil, ink, and uh, watercolor and acrylic inks, I guess. So I'll paint it up. Nice. Mike, hey. what are you using today? Uh, so I'm going to try something a little different. I'm using a red paper like I did last week, but I'm going to try a different kind of uh, marker that's not going to hopefully have the same kind of reflective problem I was having last week. Uh, so we'll hopefully, because uh, that's the only problem with the inks that I like to use, both uh, with just my brush and also the kind that the, uh, also this uh, Pentel pocket brush pen. The problem is on, on colored paper like this, or tough paper, is the metallic aspect of the ink sometimes sits on top and becomes a very reflective thing, which is terrible to try to scan or get good footage of while you're working. So uh, I'm trying something a little different today. Um, so hopefully you'll be able to actually see what I'm doing this week. Awesome. Casey, how about you? What are you What are you working on today? Um, well, I've got basically everything in the kitchen sink here, so I just kind of <laughs> grab at whatever I feel like will work at the time. I'll probably do a bit of uh, ink and acrylic um, if I get that far. Um, chances are I'll be finishing this up after we're done, but so try and do, you know, I try and get into the painting aspect of it, right? So yeah. Very cool. I don't want to pressure myself and try and like, you know, rush it. Try and do something 
I mean, I'm up against some juggernauts here, so I got to make this good. You know? <laughs> Don't be nervous, man. You'll be good. You'll be good. Oh, yeah. um, I haven't put on that much weight. <laughs> the pandemic, man. <laughs> Julian <laughs> says uh, Ben made vampires cool again. Thank you. And then Twilight hit. <laughs> Crash the Straight vampire market. And Twilight got really big, and uh, vampires were back to being <laughs> kind of pedophiles. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> If you're, a, if you're a few hundred years old and you're hanging out at a high school, that's that's not cool. <laughs> that's that's a, actually yeah, that's one way to look at it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. I, I never think logically, if I'm a, I'm a few hundred years old, I got better things to do than hang out with school kids. That's true. What are you going to talk true. about? <laughs> Justin yeah. Bieber. Oh. Not really on the same on the same level there, you know. Well, I never understood that about Twilight. I can't. I don't even consider that real, you know, vampires at all. But. I couldn't I understand either, them man. going to high school when they're hundreds of years old or whatever. <laughs> That's true. I don't think I actually thought of that. I just assumed that they were converted as teenagers. I don't. I don't know anything about it. So now, now that it, now that it all seems way more ridiculous to me. <laughs> well, we were hopefully the target audience for the books anyway. So <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. I mean, if you are, more power to you. Yeah. Enjoy what you like. Is it okay if I do a vampire Batman though? Would that be all right? Whatever you want, man. I mean, is that? Yeah, is that what yeah, you're doing? Yeah, for sure. Uh, Morley says two lefties. Cool. That's true. We do have two lefties here. Oh yeah. No. Uh, no. 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 We called correcties. Correcties. <laughs> Mike, we're gotta, we're wrong. We're gonna end the bigotry, man. Gotta... <laughs> <laughs> left-handed people get a real deal. <laughs> we'll do the left-handed charity. Thing. Have you tried using a pair of scissors? <laughs> It's true. Though. I wish it I was is, left, is, every, every lefty, every lefty that I know, or every correcty that I know, is always a better artist. Like I'm married to a correcty, and uh, there's a reason. She's like she, she just you know, unbelievable talent. And I feel like every left-handed person I meet can, when it comes to creative, they're 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 just amazing at it. They're more amazing at it than they should be. So it's, uh, I'm definitely uh, the underdog here uh, with you guys. <laughs> being no, you know, man. Being correcties. I like that, correcties. That's good. No, I just like when someone says I'm a lefty, I always go, no, I'm a correcty. <laughs> it's, it's a reflex now. But, correcties. Um, I just pulled that line, uh, everybody's born right-handed, but only the gifted overcome it. Oh. oh. <laughs> oh. Right. I like that. That's good. <laughs> Apparently, uh, the profession with the most percentage of left-handed people is architecture. Interesting. I read that once, but it's still a creative sort of industry. So. Huh. There's something yeah. to it, to being left-handed and being creative. So. Isn't there, a, yeah, there's something to the the side of the brain that you're using, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. That's the theory. Is that it's I, d- I just pulled that out of my brain. ass. I, I have no idea, but. According to oh, Betty there's, Edwards. There's, uh, I thought that sounded pretty good. No? There's books about that. There is, there's, it's a lot of yeah. study around that right side, left side uh, relationship of the brain, for sure. And Like, I, I remember in college doing, like, left-handed exercises in drawing class to, to kind of strengthen that side and, and have a, a more, That's you right. know, a, a, a stronger connection to that. And it's real. It's like, I, I found actually, if I did a life drawing or something, even like a one minute or 30 second gesture in a life drawing with the wrong hand, uh, I would find that my angles, whether well, the drawing didn't have the muscular control, but the angles that I selected to draw were probably more accurate than, then they would be drawn with the right hand, if that makes any sense. There, there seemed like there would be less correction necessary. They just didn't have the motor skill development that my right hand does, right? Hmm. So, I don't know. That's what it felt like to me anyway. I'm time. actually ambidextrous, by the way, so I'm not a full lefty. <laughs> so I'm, I'm just, sort of like that too. I'm, I'm a cheetah. Use both. I think all lefties have to be though, to, to a degree. Like I know Erica definitely yeah. is like, um, uses her right hand for a lot of stuff, you know, like the creative stuff and, and on the bench and whatever, you know. It's a right-handed yeah. world. It is a right-handed world. <laughs> and that's what I'm trying to change. <laughs> <laughs> One day at a time. <laughs> our, our charity tonight will be uh, making it a left-handed world. <laughs> I'm not a supremacist. The tides. <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> I'm not a left-handed supremacist. I'm just... Wait a second. <laughs> supremacist. <laughs> I just want equality. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> this took a turn. Well, that's what you'd call it if you were, you know. I guess so. I don't right. want to make you left-handed. Yeah, you can't say you're a leftist, yeah. A leftist? <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. 
But we'd be a writer. Someone's someone just tuning in right now, and they're what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? What are they talking about? Um, speaking of which, so Batman. So Batman. No, uh, actually, let's, let's talk about the charities a little bit. Um, so as per the regular schedule mania, uh, we'll be doing an auction for these pieces. Um, so this time we decided to make it uh, artist's choice charities. Um, was it? Sorry, is it not usually artist's choice? I didn't know. Um, no, well, we just, we normally I'll do the same charity at the same time, but we just, we just thought we would try something a little different. Yeah, well, you're yeah. all Canadian, right? So yes. you have various Canadian uh, relevant things up there. For sure, for sure. Yeah. Um, but, uh, I don't know what charities you've been giving to lately with the with these. Uh, we were actually all over the place. Uh, we did okay. a, a food bank last uh, last time nice. round. Uh, we did the uh, kids help helpline, um, which is a, a helpline when uh, kids have issues and they need to call someone. So we're kind of all over the place. Um, yeah. But yeah, um, Casey, Sorry did you? Sc- yeah, screw Sorry. it up. Sorry to screw it up. <laughs> no, it's all good. <laughs> You're not screwing it up. Did you want to talk about yours first, Ben? Uh, Sorry. Well, I'm. I'm. Uh, it's called um, not this time, and uh, okay. it's a Seattle. Not this time with an exclamation mark. Um, it's a Seattle-based charity to do with social justice and uh, to, and police violence and stuff. And it actually apparently had had some effect on some policy locally. So oh. I figured, oh, they've actually already done some stuff. So I'll do some stuff for them. I've done a bit of stuff for them before. So. So we'll go to social justice, helping the policies about all the trouble that's going on right now. Sure. Very timely. Very timely. Um, I figured, yeah, now is a good time for that. So. That's, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, Mike, have you, have you landed on one? Yeah. Uh, this week, I'm going to be supporting the NIA Center for the Arts in Toronto. And what's, what's the NIA Center? The NIA Center for the Arts is the... Uh, it's a it's a Toronto-based not-for-profit organization that supports, showcases, and promotes uh, an appreciation of arts from across the uh, African um, diaspora. I don't know how you say that word. How do you say it? Diaspora. Yeah. Yeah. I never, I never think I've ever said that word out loud before. Sorry. That's... I'm pretty sure it's diaspora. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. yeah. But I'm foreign. Ignore me. <laughs> Casey. <laughs> Where's yours going? <laughs> so I've been uh, getting back into doing um, some First Nations research and things. So I was it's in the news all the time about uh, communities up north um, not having fresh water. And it's something like 20% of the First Nations communities are, are under like boil water advisories and stuff. Wow. So it's like thousands and thousands of homes. So I thought maybe that might be, a, you know, something worthwhile. It's good Although and it's and it's it's worse right now. Like, like they're having a harder time getting things now. You know, with with uh, you know not getting resources to communities and stuff. So, yeah. oh, that's great, man. That's great. Yeah, I love I, I love doing these. Yeah, and we've done these. we've we've raised some money so far. We've only done like this is our fifth one, and we've actually. I think you're well on your way to your goal, you know, like, I think you're well on your way to, we're making an impact every week in some small way. And it's, for sure. it, it, for it sure. feels good, you know? And I'll tell you, uh, I mean, I'm constantly being inundated by people uh, reaching out to me and saying they're just loving it. I mean, you know, That's we're good. all sort of on lockdown, right. And we're not being, we're, we're not able to go to the comic cons like we used to, to see this, some of this. So I'm, I'm happy to bring a little bit of that, to a lot of folks and thanks to you guys for volunteering and and uh sharing your talents it's great man thank you for having me yeah man it's yeah it's nice that you got this platform to to help out it's nice to be invited back i didn't think you'd have me again you know? what <laughs> come on <laughs> Casey. you killed everybody uh, in spider-man week man what are you talking about it's not like you're trying to make everybody a lefty we we'll have to go Begin home with that. Like that, that Temple Smith. <laughs> I'm not a left hand supremacist. I, I promise. <laughs> Just use the hand you were born with. <laughs> <laughs> but even then, that that that's a philosophical argument right there. I don't know. Is that the hand you're dealt? Yes. 
But it's crazy, right? Like that was associated the hand of the devil, and they used to beat children if they were using their left hand. Well, yeah. you, you know about you know that, what right? hand you used to wipe with, or still, I don't know. Right? So. Yeah, that's in some. Yeah, like yeah, in some cultures, right? Like that's like your left hand. You do that kind of the dirty stuff, and the right hand is for more social think, interaction. And I think that was generally every culture, though. Yeah, we haven't had modern plumbing in in most places for until very recently, really. That's true. Yeah. Mike, there's, you, a buzz ab- there's a buzz about <laughs> your uh, your beard. It keeps popping on the camera. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> well, as long as my flabby grandma so, arms aren't getting into the into the picture, that's all it that matters. So Paul's asking if these are being auctioned. So Paul, you can actually start the auction in the chat right here. Uh, we're going to continue on, and we're going to complete it uh, Thursday at noon. The uh, the winners will be reached out to, and what we'll ask the winners to do is <laughs> is to, sorry, I'm seeing the replay, and I see Mike's beard just keep coming out. Um, <laughs> so by by Thursday at noon, I got all I got all messed up. By Thursday at noon, uh, we'll reach out to the winners, and uh, we'll make sure that uh, you donate to this specific charity. And uh, we'll have these pieces mailed out to you. But by all means, start uh, start in the chat here. We'll just carry it on into the official uh, comment section of the auction. Is this Paul who's bid before? Who's been on before? Paul Schwarber. Oh, Paul Schwarber. I think I know that name. Paul, yeah, you know Paul. Paul's in Kentucky, man. Yeah, yeah, from uh, CincyCon. Yeah, yeah. I think that's where I met him, yeah. Oh, man, I didn't even know you were on here, Paul. That's <laughs> awesome. I don't remember many people. I remember Paul. Yeah. Tim, no, you don't Duncan, like Paul. Tim Duncan says, uh, thanks again to the artists for giving your art. This is so much fun to watch. I don't care which hand they work with. <laughs> That's good. That's the uh, political answer. Thanks for joining <laughs> again, Tim. <laughs> Tim's a good guy. He's been on a few pieces already, like Nice. Got a, his collection's growing from this. Oh yeah. I actually enjoyed uh, drawing along just for the heck of it. It's the yeah. only time I draw. <laughs> it's good, it's man. Easy. It's healthy. That's great. Drawing is a very healthy thing. If I didn't have drawing, I wouldn't be nothing. Here. I'm going to zoom in on uh, Ben's there a little bit. Looks like he's got an outline going. Yep. Nice, nice. I work pretty quick, though, mind you, so. Wow. Yep. See, that's like a new Batman. It'd be perfect this week. Uh, It's cheating a bit for me. I like, I love Batman, so. What's the, I would have been uh, good with Doctor Doom. I would have been good with like Thanos or like you know Ghost Rider or whatever. But like, I just don't want to draw the motorcycle, you know. But I'll. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Batman's always so fun to draw. There's just oh, yeah. infinite ways, you know. Yeah, you can't go wrong. Pretty much the most iconic superhero with his shape. So, yes, the ears and the cape. You could spot him a mile away. So, yep. usually. Yeah, he wins. I think, anyway. And he's, you know, super, like, cross-generational. Like, there's people who like different, you know, fully legit different versions of, you know, or, you know, outcomes of Batman, you know what I mean? And it's yeah. uh, it's great, like. So we had this question uh, last week, Ben. Um, Uh-oh, I'm sorry. And, yeah, it's all right. <laughs> And uh, Casey and Mike actually already answered this one, but uh, who's got the better rogues gallery, Spider-Man or Batman? Uh, Batman. Yeah? Absolutely. Because every single villain he has, and including himself, they're all very damaged psychologically people that manifest different sort of things. So, I don't know. um, Spider-Man's fun visually, but I think there's a lot more meat to a lot of the the broken people that are Batman villains. Huh. I don't know. I read Arkham Asylum was one of my first comics. So it's like, oh, Oh. it's really cool. And there's all this psychological stuff going on. And I don't know. 
Very cool. You're you're alone on that one. Well, <laughs> but that's okay because you gave. Huh? Yes. <laughs> I'm used to having a shitty opinion that no one else agrees with. So. <laughs> Because I just throw it out there. So, like, what everyone else said, Spider Man. Everyone else said Spider Man. I grew up on Spider Man too. I don't know if I. But like, if one of the first comics you read was Arkham Asylum, I can see that. I I just, I, I probably spent every lunch hour from age, you know, age three to age ten watching Spider Man at lunch. You know, like, uh, on on the TV and just like in the comics. Like, I was a Spider Man kid, so I didn't really connect with Batman until I was an adult. And I, I, I do get the, I like the Rogues Gallery, but I think. For me, it just Spider-Man just has a, a bigger variety. I mean, Batman's got some cool bad guys for sure, and they are all damaged for sure. But and the Joker is worth like you know two or three of Spider-Man villains. You know, yeah, he's any, very any, any day of the week. Like, I will give you that for sure. But I don't know. I just think yeah, maybe from a purely visual standpoint, I just enjoy the the Spidey villains more. You know, a lot of them would be more fun to draw, probably too. Or well, about the same. So, huh. Um, Sam Noir is asking which uh, artist has influenced the way each of you draw Batman the most? Ooh, that's a good question. Hello, uh, Sam. Kelly Jones, probably. Yeah. Kelly Jones was mine. It's fun. Sam Keith did kind of a wacky Batman, too. Oh, I love his. Yeah, yeah he I'm... also did a correct Batman. So Yeah. But even when they're like... Killing joke, like when you see Brian Boland and I mean, there's so many, like you, you mentioned Arkham Asylum already, like Dave McKean is just hard yeah, to yeah. top. Like I, I actually have a hard time answering that question. I, um, I don't know. I, I think probably for me, honestly, it, it's probably the, the most, uh, I don't know. It's probably the uh, Jose Garcia Lopez version. I was just that, thinking of him too. Uh, that DC branded version that was in their packaging and the toys and stuff that, that he was the visionary behind. I think for me, like it's not the dark Batman, it's, it's, but it's not quite the, it's not as bright as the, as the 66 Batman, but it's also a little bit more polished and more adult than like the super friends Batman. It's kind of a perfect uh, focal point for me of Batman. And you can, you know, just, make the cow black instead of blue and you, uh, you you can still you know capture that kind of feeling uh that you're that, that that i can't really put the word on it but um i don't know you can make it darker easily using that as a base you know your your bat base sort of <laughs> that was like that Garcia lopez yeah and he did that the batman versus it. hulk yeah 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 and that was my first introduction to batman too was that book and it's so well done it's true I just started thinking of him before you, right when you said it. There's too many. But, you know, Simon Bisley might have been the first, like, Batman comic oh. that I picked up and bought off the shelf because it was, like, the Batman and Dread, I think. Yeah, and, that was uh, amazing. The painted, yeah. So, I don't know. I don't know. If, it, Biz must have done some more Bat, Batman stuff after that as well. I just, uh, that one comes to mind as being pretty crisp and clean in my head. I just finished reading Slain, Slain or Slanya, and uh, it was... Uh, Wait, what did you call it? Slanya. Like the, or, Is that uh, really how you say it? Well, that's how they tell you to say it in the front of the book. That's what Pat Mills has written in the front. Is that right? Well, that's the way I'm meant to say it. The pronoun- that's the way it's meant to be said, yeah. But I, uh, but I, I had no idea. It says slain. Yeah. Slanya. I always thought it was Slanya. <laughs> Sounds like Sonya. <laughs> yeah. Julian says Norm, Ray Fogle, Kelly Jones, and also Bernie Wrightson. Oh, you, you gotta know, love Bernie, Bernie Wrightson too. Yeah, yeah, Bernie's Batman was great for sure, and I and actually, yeah, Norm's was was fantastic. Norm was so definitive in the '90s, like for Batman, I think really, you know. Hmm. Then you get Miller and Mazzuchelli on year one, and yeah, Neil Adams. Neil Adams for sure. I love yeah. I, I love Frank's uh, you know Dark Knight Returns obviously too. Like that's that's a great Batman look, it's, it's iconic, you know. Yeah. I have He's issues with Frank Miller strong. Batman. What's that? I have, you know, I have issues with Frank, the the Frank Miller style Batman. Yeah, because bats. The the the, the chunky Batman, like the. Well, the reason why Batman dresses up as a bat is to <laughs> not go to Mardi Gras and look and look fancy. He's trying to look menacing and foreboding, and you know, have that presence, right? Yeah. There are two kinds of bats. There's yeah. The micro bats with the horseshoe bat, vampire bat, the ones with the big ears and sonar, 
And then there's the other kind, which I forget the name of. They're the fruit bats with the small ears and the big cutesy eyes. Batman should have big ears because he's a micro bat kind yeah. of fly in the night one. He's not a fruit bat. <laughs> so I always give him big ears. Huh. But I, I'll give Frank Miller a pass because he does like the best Batman. So he looks very yeah. butch. Bernie made some long ass ears. Like I love the, the cult, like Batman. The oh, yeah. Just so yeah. Crazy. Like I loved how he drew Batman in that actually. Yeah, he's, yeah, man. Bernie drew everything perfect though. Literally everything he drew was perfect. Yeah, gotta love his stuff. Hmm. Uh, Paul says Darwin Cook's Batman was one of his favorites. Oh yeah, Darwin did a great Batman too. Hmm. Yeah. Someone wants to know what your favorite Batman movie was. <laughs> did you like any of them? <laughs> <laughs> Dark Knight trilogy. Okay. All of them. Well, you know, probably the. S- Second one most, I guess. No. Uh, yeah, the second. Which was the one with Heath Ledger? Second yeah, one. Second. Yeah, it was the second yeah. one. I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> I forget everything now. Casey, who you got? Yeah, I like that. I mean, I still, I'm still nostalgic for the Tim Burton one, but I mean, I love that Christopher Nolan one too. The first one? The first uh, Batman? Um I think the second one too. I went back and see that second one with Joker like several times in the theater. I mean, that blew me away. But uh, yeah. I mean, art is subje- would... subjective, so yeah. I don't have one single favorite. I, li- I appreciate yes. most of them in many ways. Does Mask of the Phantasm count? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah actually. It's hard, to be, it's hard to beat the animated those, series. But... Those cartoons are incredible. I actually yeah. love that one. Yeah, I saw it. They're hard theater. to beat. Um, I think Michael Keaton, the, Michael, the, the Tim Burton, Michael Keaton, the first one, I think is probably my favorite Batman movie. Um, I wasn't a huge fan of the Nolan ones. Um, I, I liked aspects of them, but I didn't like him as Batman at all. And to me, that's kind of the whole point. But I thought the supporting cast was great in every in every case. And I liked Chris, Chris, uh, Christian Bale and lots of things, but I didn't care for him as Batman. He wasn't a bad Bruce Wayne, but I didn't care for him as Batman uh, mm. very much at all. I thought I knew you, Mike. Huh? I thought I knew. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> He's a right-handed Spider-Man lover. That's it. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> no, I mean, I liked a lot of those movies. I just didn't care for him as Batman. I found, you know, uh, it, without what I mean, my hearing's also terrible. Like I have, I'm hard of hearing. But uh, honestly, if I need a, if I need guaranteed subtitles to be able to watch your movie, then I think you yeah. failed as the hero of the movie. But I, uh, You're not wrong. His voice was a bit of a put on. So yeah, it was just it was just so overdone. And then like, I just wanted him to take a drink. Like, just stop and take a drink, and then continue because he's starting to get a little dry in the room, and he's, you know, he's still pushing it. It's the the words stop losing any kind of sharpness, and eventually it just sounds like good. It just it was horrible. <laughs> uh, I found Bane much easier to understand than 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 him. So that was wow. You know. It was just, yeah, I don't know. You imagine, you, actually, man. you imagine if you actually knew him in real life and then you met him as Batman and he just put on the gruff voice. It's like, <laughs> Bruce, why are you making a stupid voice, Bruce? What the fuck? <laughs> That's true. <laughs> oh, so no, I'm not Bruce. I'm some other. <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah. I own this hotel. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. The rest of the sketch of Mania will be done in that voice. Yeah. <laughs> No one will be talking in half an hour. What was that? <laughs> we should probably do a wrestling night where we either draw wrestlers or all have to talk like wrestlers, but uh, that would be funny. Oh, yeah. I'll do that all night. <laughs> you could just some guy who just barks like the ultimate warrior the whole time. <laughs> now I'm using my HP pencil. I'll just be the animal and say mine. Yeah. So, what's everyone working on these days? Uh, my bank balance. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> my, my bank balance. The same thing. I'm always desperately trying to work on. Yeah. Uh, I got asked to do something really cool that uh, is a very big thing for me, but I can't talk about it. Of course. It's only a small thing. 
but I can't talk about it. Those are sometimes the best ones. No, it's like when you're a fan of something, you know, when you grow up, it's like, oh, oh, okay, I'll do a little bit of that. So I can sleep, I sleep better at night. So I got to do a, like a pin-up in the Mad Max book when it came out. Yes. So that's sort of very important to me, so. Oh, that's happy. cool. Well, you know, it's kind of an Australian thing. Yes. Unfortunately, everyone in America goes to... Um, uh, Crocodile Dundee, but I say, no, 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 Mad Max. Yes. Yeah. If you're going <laughs> to yeah. think of an Australian stereotype, please use the one that was actually, you know, <laughs> still works. And was I, I love the first film. Oh, yeah. I, I can't remember. I mean, I, I had it, I recorded it. I can't remember how many times I watched that Ooh, on VHS. You mean the actual first film? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Cause yeah, you, yeah. It's get, it gets complicated. I keep forgetting you guys are uh, not Americans. So Mad Max. Different. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And then there was the, the Road Warrior was the second, right? It was the so, second yeah. film, yep. Yeah. And it was... Which I also liked, but there was something about that first film. That oh, was the just first so one was just such a different animal altogether. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's really... Yeah, it's fucking awesome. Sorry, it's really awesome. Oh, see, I'm sweating, guys. It's okay. already starting to drip. I gotta there you go. Sweating. All the sweats. The sweat's coming out. The pressure's do I, on. Do I need to do a uh, spotlight? There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Zoom in. That's yeah. we're zoomed in. There it is. <laughs> there it is. There it is. Looking like a sweaty. DNA yeah. In my, in my artwork, guys. <laughs> That's worth money. DNA. You get the whole deal with me. You get the real. Uh, I might have missed some of them, but I think we're at about 140 bucks for the bid so far. Nice. It's going up already. already eh? Yeah. I'm going to uh, just quickly share my screen because there's a few things uh, I want well, to share. So one sec. Let's see. Share screen. Actually, I wanted to talk about this first. The Corrupted Creatures Playmats. Ben, can you talk a little bit about that? Because I think this is a very, Not very really. cool. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did some art for some gaming mats. Uh, nice. <laughs> no, it, was, it, was, it was cool. It was a challenge. Yeah. Um, but Everyone I'm not involved in it more than that. Like, that's what I did. So, I mean, I have okay. some. But, they were, I mean, they were cool. But uh, And there's, like, one for each race or whatever you want to call the, you know, an angel, a, a demon, a, a mer person, a, a dragon. <laughs> <laughs> like, you're asking the wrong guy. I'm not the creator or anything. I just got, <laughs> I got asked to do, like, six images. So, it was, like, it was a fun thing. It was a challenge. But, um, yeah. Very cool. And did, didn't you work on um, some D and D book way back? Is that correct? Uh, I probably did Bean a tiny folio little bit. Or? I've done, I think, a tiny little bit of Wizards of the Coast work. Very or cool. Whatever the other one was, White Wolf as well. Tiny bit. It was many, many years ago. Like as a small illustration job. I haven't done much. I did some sort of hex thing. They had a hex game thing with little hexag hexagonal cards. I did a couple of them. Huh. And I should also add, I've done many Kickstarters and <laughs> I'm finally wrapping up the old one that I'm, I got to finish. So nice. But that one wasn't me. That one was totally just those guys after they, you know, asked me to do some art. Everyone Very loves cool. them. I know uh, Chris Sampson, a friend of mine uh, from the works at Xenoscope. He's a tremendous fan of uh, Ben's and he was so excited about that Kickstarter and so excited to get to, uh, to get those gaming mats, and then I then and Martin the other a couple of weeks ago was like, "Yeah, I got I got Ben's gaming mat." And I'm like, "That's so awesome!" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, very cool. Uh, Julian wants to know what kind of. Sorry, we're going to go back to Batman. Apparently, sure. <laughs> what kind of band? What kind of band shirts do Batman rock on his day off? Hmm. <laughs> uh, he's a he's a billionaire and he's buff because he's Batman. I think he would just go shirtless. Hmm. Hmm. Honestly. Why not? <laughs> or the correct answer is whatever Alfred Damwell puts out for him that day. Yeah. Uh, he ain't got time to choose. He just, you know, <laughs> that's what Alfred's for. Doesn't waste brain power. I wonder if he's ever been drawn with the back, with the, with the shirt on it, before. It, is he into the cure, maybe? I don't know. The cure. <laughs> <laughs> is he an emo? The killing joke. <laughs> Perhaps the killing joke. <laughs> that'd be that'd be a funny band shirt to have him wearing actually. That'd be great. <laughs> oh jeez, that's funny. 
I think it'd be Yanny. It'd be like Yanny. So Yanny? Yanny? Yeah. Rocking the Yanny shirt? Is it, it, yeah. I've never seen a Yanny shirt. Yeah, they might not. It all depends on which. Oh, look at that sweat. Look at that ridiculousness. Oh, good <laughs> man. Oh, my God. <laughs> That literally it's rolled together. down my beard and did like a cannonball under my head. <laughs> oh. No, it's so humid in here. Woo. How are the cats doing in there? They don't enjoy the humidity very much. Rama has uh, spent most of the time uh, just laying on the floor, finding cool spots, and we've been making some cool areas for him. And uh, Bear mostly spends his time upstairs with his feet pressed against the wall because I think the wall's a bit cooler. Um, but it's, it hasn't been that bad today compared to the last few days, but yeah, it's been pretty bad. Like you've got a little, you've got like a window unit, don't you? Like a little... Yeah, yeah, it's just, it's a bit of an awkward setup, but we got it set up right now. We just don't run it all the time because it's super expensive, but um, that's the main reason. But uh, when the cats, you know, we, 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 the cats will never suffer. They're just, this is their normal behavior, but just maybe slightly 10%, you know, <laughs> switched on a little more. Uh, they're older cats and it's yeah. uh you know they're comfortable but um we have the air on when it gets anything higher than like you know 28 or whatever outside yeah like bears yeah. so furry yeah bears a woolly guy so this is why i like living in seattle yeah the weather's sure nice here human. man i uh was sorry i wouldn't be able to go to you know the, the emerald city and visit you guys recently the last couple of years such a good time last time and such a beautiful place the market the the whole the whole scene the whole walk downtown all of it just fantastic place so, so do, lo do locals go to the market as well i loved it uh i used to yeah because i used to live close so yeah you're further away now eh yeah i'm in uh, a place called west seattle ah uh the bridge just broke so we may not have a bridge ever again or be built in about 10 years uh we also just had a, a bag of uh, human body parts wash up on the beach which is fun oh my that God. happened like two days ago whoa oh geez so we're uh, i'm like three blocks from a little bit of beach because uh, seattle doesn't have much actual beach so I'm a, I'm a i'm a little boat ride from the rest of the main city hmm. and i'm not joking about the body parts Jeez. Wow. like it's more the news. Ugh. Yikes! Uh, Seattle, um, Pacific Northwest is is home to a great many serial killers. There's a, or has been historically. I'm not trying to go dark. I do horror comics for. Wow! Like, <laughs> it got really quiet there for a minute. I'm just saying it's yeah, not me either. I remember so, that. Though. I didn't do uh, it. We, we were talking about the market. <laughs> and I wonder we got if to, uh, we got yeah, the bodies. <laughs> I wonder if that's why Longbow Hunters was set in uh, Seattle because that was a story about serial killers that Mike Grell told with Green Arrow that time. And Maybe. Uh, huh. I wonder if that was part of the inspiration. Because, like, what is it, like, what, the Zodiac Killer or someone from there as well? Or was it uh, uh, Bobby I mean, I don't know sure. the Zodiac Killer, I guess. Yeah. There's the Green, the Green River Killer, I think, is Pacific Northwest, and there's a few others. Oh, okay. I don't have a great memory. I just, you know. Hmm. I got. I promise. I won't talk about serial killers anymore. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> Nothing's off limits, man. No, not <laughs> at all. You know, don't tell me that. Uh, meat loaves bad out of hell. Oh, I guess that's the T-shirt. <laughs> oh yeah, and that's a Richard Corbin painting on that. There you go. The T-shirt would be better than the concert, unfortunately. Yeah. You know he sings notoriously off key, right? Meatloaf? Um, really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, he's had some bad perf live performances. I think Eric has seen Meatloaf in the 90s when he came back with the big, uh, the big Robin Hood, uh, the Robin Hood movie soundtrack and all that. That was probably, well, back when he was more on top of his game, I'd say, probably. But man, no, you can look up some horrendous performances on, like, he, he, uh, Australia has our version of the Super Bowl. It's called the Grand Final for our own version of football. He was the special guest, like to perform at halftime, and uh, it did not go well. It's probably a line <laughs> oh, so wow. It was. It was like, oh my goodness, people paid money for that. But I love meatloaf. Don't get me wrong. Oh yeah. I'm just saying, the, the t-shirt. Super bad horror movie. Go for the t-shirt. 
Mm. Yeah, I gotta turn around and take a look what everyone's doing. I got my back to y'all while I draw here. I gotta find a better setup, but right now I haven't got the space to have like my computer next to my my drawing table, so they they have to be across from each other. So I'm just using a uh, Winsor Newton brush marker, which is like the Winsor Newton brand version of a uh, Copic marker, really. Um, but I think these were these were a little cheaper, and I grabbed a bunch of them, and they're pretty good. Good pigment in them anyway, and seem to work pretty well. They're a little bit reflective, though. I don't know how they look on the screen, but yeah, I'm looking at. Oh, look at Ben's! God, God. I know. <laughs> He is fast. Oh my goodness. I if I can see what this is. No, I'm just trying to block stuff in before I add layers of stuff. Trust me, it's uh, touch and go. <laughs> that looks great. Great design. I tend, to, I tend to do things differently when I'm doing it in front of an audience, and I also know there's a time limit. And I also have to plan ahead of what I'm trying to do. Yeah. I mean, I could sit here for eight hours and do a, a line drawing, or I could not. <laughs> eight hours versus one. How long is this? <laughs> do, we just, do we just go until we go? Well, or, I mean, you don't have to be finished at the end of the oh. show. If you want to, you need a, like, you know, oh, I know. I, use, I sometimes need a few minutes to add, like, highlights it's, or scan or whatever. It's, but, it's like, two hours, but. Oh, okay, yeah, two hours. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm pacing myself well then. But there's a difference between two hours and eight hours on a, on a or not ten hours on an illustration. Yeah, or several I was, days. I was asked I was asked this question a while back too, um, and I wrote it down especially for this. <laughs> um, I, did you guys see that article on essential workers and artists yes. sort of being yeah. at the lower end of it? Yeah. Um, so I just wonder what your take on like what role artists have in society. And I mean, well, I mean, in the case of that article, which was ridiculous, yeah, uh, which showed, uh, you know, artists, what we ranked number, what, seven or something, or, or like number one most useless job or whatever the freak yeah, it was. Yeah, that's crazy. What? All I know is they didn't, got, they didn't hire a cleaner to do that ad or make those illustrations. They didn't hire a nurse to do that ad or make that illustration. They hired an artist. And, you know, everyone's had to turn to art, especially during this pandemic. Everyone's had to turn to Netflix you know, their DVD collection, their comic books, their novels, whatever, what have you. Yeah. And that's all made by artists. So, you know, reflect back on the last couple of months of hardship that everyone has had. And then imagine you didn't have music or TV or literature or comics to turn to, you know, and then, and then ask yourself again, how important artists are. And was uh, someone actually arguing that arts aren't that important. Yes, yeah, there like was it, was an was life. it was an illustrated thing that, you know, said it listed most essential jobs and then least essential jobs. An artist came up uh, highly ranked. Someone will probably post it on the comments there. But, uh, we, the arts are the cream on top of civilization. They're the only point of living apart from feeding yourself is creativity and expressing yourself. That's what separates us from dolphins or maybe not even they sing. <laughs> Like once you got the basics covered, health, food, shelter, right? Yeah. Uh, what point is there to what point is there to money? You know, except for buying things that are aesthetically pleasing, or I don't know, man. Arts is yeah. what defines a civilization too. It's like it's all that's left at the end that we we judge it by. So it's true. Be it a building or a painting or a sculpture or whatever. So. Yeah. Yep. It sounds like it was it. written by a Wall Street guy or someone. It, it was taken in some uh, like Middle Eastern country or something, wasn't it? Or uh, an Asian country or something? It was like a weird. I'm not sure. Yeah. I thought it was just the Toronto Star or something. Yeah, no, it was. I think it was. posted uh, it there, but I don't know well, where the poll was done. I'm not sure. Huh. Well, people are going to say that, but, you know, everyone loves yeah. going. Like, even like conservatives, not to get political, who hate Hollywood and Hollywood liberalism and stuff, they still go to see movies because yeah. everyone wants to see a story or, you know, storytelling is the oldest profession since we were around campfires. So it's like, man, that's shocking. I'm upset with the Toronto star. There you go. 
or whoever it was. It may not have been the star. It might not have been the star. It might be Wherever slagging the them for no reason. <laughs> I'm not saying we're valuable. I'm saying we're important. We don't save lives. We're not important in that way. But without the arts or music or what is the point of life? To work and then die? Yeah, I guess. That's my... Uh, tell me I'm wrong, please. Yeah. It's hard to put it. Yeah, it's the reason for living. I mean, it's... Uh, yeah. Yeah, to put it better, creating or consuming it, yeah, you know, defines and progresses our humanity and shapes our culture, and it's the inner discussion amongst ourselves about us. Like the only people that would say it are (laughs) are those that have no imagination, or you know, are just those drones or peons, you know, of the world that uh, I don't know. It's which is crazy because I just thought it was very odd. Like I, I, you know, and and I mean, I've I've basic anybody i've talked to has sort of come up with that same sort of discussion point where yeah i mean even if you think about the pandemic that we're going through right now like what, what got us through this <laughs> yeah what is getting what gets us you through, through any hard time it's it's some music or a movie or art of some kind so yes. video game or whatever i mean you know you can't have any of those things without art you can't have you know i don't know yeah it's it just seems it was it's just it's just funny that they did an illustrated diagram to show this where they needed to hire an artist. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Like it was just such a ridiculous <laughs> article as a result. Like, uh, yeah. yeah and, uh, I mean, and are people just voting for their own profession? You know, like. Uh, well, yeah, obviously, lawyers are the most important these. people in society. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> we need more lawyers. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, lawyers. <laughs> Martin, I hope you're not a lawyer. I'm, I'm not a lawyer, no. No. I'm not a lawyer. <laughs> and if I was, I'd probably agree with you. <laughs> I've met lawyers that agree too, but <laughs> I have to drop Batman upside down. Someone I read an article though that pointed out something that made me realize that there there are important jobs and professions in society. Obviously, one of the important ones is doctors and people who heal people. And then there's people that uplift people like art, the arts, right? And then there's a lot of people in the economy and they have a job. They don't actually do anything that makes anything or does anything. What they do is a job that because something else needs something else that is kind of more just busy work, even if it's not seen as busy work. So like when you create paperwork, for no real reason when you could really be more efficient that creates a whole bunch of jobs so there's a whole bunch of jobs in like the american healthcare industry that don't necessarily have to be there they're just busy work when you could make an efficient system you know what i mean i mean they st- they're the biggest user of faxes still in the world you don't need to fax things anymore technically you can go digital now that Stuff sounds like, like that. my job yeah and, and lawyers <laughs> And, and lo- the loyally profession makes sure that you need them. Put it that way. Mm. Like if they write the rules, of course you're going to make sure you need a lawyer. At least until the robots take over and the AI. <laughs> it, was, it was an interesting, interesting perspective on what's actually important, mm-hmm. and and it contributes to society. So I think arts do, even if it's in, in intangible use and importance. I am Absolutely. slightly biased. I feel like people don't know how, how difficult it is. Yeah, no one really signs up to, to be an artist to be rich and famous. Not a visual art. Like, it's like, mm. it's great if you get there. Usually you're dead when that happens. Yeah. Now, I'm always amazed when people will tell me how, oh, it must be so great to have such an easy job. Because they see something happen easily on a page and they think that that's just something that just, you yeah. know, there's no explanation for it. Just... You know, and it's flattering as, at the same time as being like ridiculous. And, uh, you know, it's, it's not an easy job. I've, I've, I used to dig trenches in the hot summer sun as a younger and much more fit man. And that's hard work. That's hard yeah. digging. That's, that's tough physical work. And you know what? I've lost more sleep and been more broken physically by making comics and making art and trying to survive on that than I have swinging a shovel or working a telephone for a telemarketing or unloading trucks for a grocery store or whatever other job I've had in my life. 
you know what I mean? Uh, retail, whatever. Nothing's has been as hard as comic and is comics, and nothing's also been as rewarding. Uh, nothing has paid me less, but nothing has <laughs> has been more enjoyable to do. So it's That's strange. It's a lot more it's personal too. It's very huh? personal to you. It's very personal to you too. It is. Right? It is. So yeah. It takes a toll that way. Yeah. Mm. It eats you up sometimes. It eats you up. You lose sleep. You lose. You know. You lose hope sometimes, and it's. Uh, yeah, it's, it can be tough. It can be really tough. But, you know, it's um, it, it just looks like, you know, cartoons and pictures to people who, who just enjoy it for, from that standpoint alone. But I love those people because Some that, that's, that's most people and that gives us the ability to have a job because they can't do that. They can't understand yeah. your brain of how you can do that. That's good. That means you, you have a little more monopoly on that. Sure, yeah. We need consumers as much as doers, so... Absolutely. I mean, we don't. It's a personal thing anyway, but. That's why I love doing these kinds of things where we can talk about the process and actually talk about what goes into it and actually, you know, people can watch it as we talk about it. Like, uh, it, it's, 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 it's fun. I mean, I, I, I love just listening to it, right, as an outsider. <laughs> but Well, and you also uh, draw too, Martin, so it's all, well, you've also got some... You know, uh, and you're a hell of a painter when it comes to miniatures and model building and that. And I think that's all that's all related. And I, you know, uh, my next thing I want to do is I want to sculpt because I want to make action figures and toys. I want to make my characters come to life in a different way and really start yes. thinking 3D yeah. and making making things like that. I don't know the first thing about it, but I know that I enjoy sculpting. And I know that when I'm sculpting and playing with clay, my drawing skills increase. They, they get better. They get sharper because I'm thinking in 3D. And so by virtue of that fact i think uh, there's a little bit of a i don't know a little bit of a transfer that happens creatively um and my drawings end up just kind of feeling like they make a little more sense mike we got to do something for sure together yeah absolutely man i'd love to i want to make some stuff well cool. you do 3d stuff <clears throat> no i i just i i generally just uh do painting <laughs> He's oh, got a printer, though, and he does 3D stuff. He's just getting started at it. Right. It's awesome. Yeah, I just started. Um, but I do want to get into the modeling aspect at some point. Yeah, I need, need to find a resin caster. Resin casters, yeah, I, I went uh, I went with the plastic uh, just because I don't really have the space, and it's toxic, and I need gloves and all this other jazz to do the resin stuff. But the resin stuff's fantastic when it comes out. So I think if if and when conventions come back, everyone has art prints now. So I think the next thing people might like is little sculptures and things. Yep. Like because people want little nice things for their cubicles and stuff. Well, okay, maybe not because maybe people will never have cubicles again. But yeah. everyone can get a print. The next thing I think might be those little things. That'd so, be that'd be very especially cool. Especially for people that sculpt. Well, uh, Chris, uh, Chris Campana on his uh, Kickstarter, he did a um, sort of, it's similar to, I guess, one of those He-Man action figures, but for yeah. his character. And uh, I think they all sold out right yep. away, and he's doing another one for the new Kickstarter. Nice. Yeah. I feel like that's like a benchmark moment in your career when something you've made, like I always think about these artists who like eventually they work at D DC for a point where they draw Batman and they have a definitive run on Batman and then they make that that series of like models that are or, or statues that are based off of an artist's oh, yeah. style like the you know the beautiful black and white series they did that, that Mike yeah. Mignola one and so many beautiful ones but um, that I feel like is such a I mean that would be such an incredible achievement in a career I think like I, I, I feel like that would be such a high point like if you know if I ever got a chance to draw Swamp Thing in any kind of capacity and made some kind of an imprint on the book, but they wanted to make a statue of a thing that I got to draw. Like, oh man, so that, that's huge. But then nothing's preventing me from doing that with my own stuff. And that's, that's kind of where my head needs to get, you know what I mean? Because uh, like even Dodge, like the stuff that Matt Nixon and I have been doing with Dodge, like the stuff that we've designed would translate so well into like G.I. Joe style action figures and accessories and helmets and gear. And there's so much stuff coming in the second issue with Dodge, which will I'm show oh, like, all these action figure options that are coming, like, uh, you know, that's something I'd love to do. So I, I, I'm, I'm going to educate myself this year in that stuff. I want to I learn about that and get serious about it, you know? 
Very cool. I was just so, saying to Martin earlier too, like I'm, I'm going to try working on a bigger project. So it'd be nice to have like, you know, a reference of like the character you got to draw over and over and over. Oh yeah. Nice to have that. Spin it oh, and light it and yeah. I sculpted this uh, swamp thing head <clears throat> years ago, like, like last year I, sw I sculpted it with just DOS clay. And um, yes. honestly, man, just having this thing on my desk and being able to throw a light bulb on it, you know, it's not even a great sculpt of his head, but it, it gives me enough information that I can make any kind of swamp thing, you know, any kind of head pose I want just by throwing a light, you know, a light source on it and playing around. And I can make you know, as many as I want, but I wanted to do a bunch of these, yeah, for my own characters, like for Dodge and for different things, yeah. uh, because I just feel like it, it just, it's such an unbelievable resource and a great tool for, for when you're drawing. I need stuff like that. Yeah. I lost the lid to my marker, man. <laughs> I'm just waiting for some ink to dry a little bit. Oh, wow. That looks great. I thank oh, you, yeah. but so nowhere near I want it yet. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. So, so Ben, did you actually seek out a lot of those darker, um, like some of the darker work? Or is that something, or did people sort of seek you out based on the type of art that you do? Like how how does that work? You mean in general, like in in general, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I just like darker stuff. I mean, I like mature stuff, and then I, you know, all the films I grew up watching that spoke to me the most were the the dark horror science fiction type stuff. So, you know, as a young you know young boy, drawing monsters and dinosaurs is much cooler than drawing uh, pretty things. Yeah, <laughs> which. <laughs> Really annoyed my mum. She preferred flowers, but <laughs> no. So I just went from there. I like mood and atmosphere and stuff like that. So yeah. I mean, I mean, and then when you do enough of it and you get known for it a bit, I mean, that's what I'm best at. Well, I'm not going to say I'm good at anything, but it's what I'm best at, I guess, to those people. Right. So they ask me to do more. I don't like being typecast. I'm not. I can do more than vampires, but but uh, you know, I, I think what's more fun is adding my slant if I have a slant, uh, two things people wouldn't expect. So yeah, yeah, that's probably what gets me now. So it's like, Oh yeah, I'll try that and give it a, you know, so yeah. Any, any, uh, characters that you'd like to try your slant at on a regular book? Uh, Lobo. Oh, oh yeah. There You've been we go. It for years, man. I hope you finally get that to, to happen one day. No, I don't think it ever happened. <laughs> <laughs> Lobo I think, I think the one awesome. I've only ever done like, two pitch things in my life. And one of them was, uh, that was around the time Lobo was changing up and I don't know what's going on with Lobo now. So no, I love Lobo. And oh, uh, skinny Lobo, that one, the emo no, Lobo. Yeah. Oh, I Lobo. Can't. oh, he's, he's gone now. They killed him off. The real Lobo's back. Oh. Yeah, they need yeah. a good hardcore black label Lobo. I yes. Good. Yeah. yeah, they gotta give fun. Simon the, the gig to do all the covers. That's it. Just does the covers and like lets everyone else draw the book. Oh, that'd be great. Everyone comes with a Simon Bisley cover. That'd be great. That'd be great. Yeah, if you've if you've ever met Simon, you realize he is literally Lobo. So. Oh yeah. <laughs> so it's a good yeah, fit. Simon and Lobo are a spiritual fantasy. connection. But uh, yeah, no, mostly I just have fun doing my own thing. So, but uh, I never say no if I'm asked to do something because it's always a chance to have fun or. Uh, have a challenge. So a lot of uh, Lovecraftian type influence. Uh, for me, only by accident because the things I was into, or I mean, you know, the things I like are derivative and inspired by Lovecraft. So I've right. only more recently got into Lovecraft, like himself, well, his older stories, not him. Yeah. He was kind of a scumbag. So, <laughs> but his stories were good. So I've adapted co a couple of his stories. Um, Directly. Dag Dagon, but, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes, the, the Dagon which destroyed my life, but that wasn't because of that. So. <laughs> and I just did um, the Dunwich Horror. I just finished that. Oh, so. cool. Oh, wicked. Awesome. None of which is available right now, but it is on my Patreon. Ah. But uh, yeah, I do everything on, on my Patreon. So I'm probably going to do another Lovecraft story at some point because they're fun to adapt. Because there is sort of another, I like, prob it's the problem solving aspect of it. How do I try and make this work and visualize that so 
Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, they're great. I've been listening to, um, I think it was the Lovecraft Society put together a, uh, um, I guess it was sort of like one of those books on tape things, but they went mm. through the entire catalog. So I've been sort of listening to that every night, but it's, uh, it's great. It's great stuff. Some of it is a little dense. He's not, yeah. he's, he's an acquired <laughs> taste, I would say. Yeah, for sure. I'm not against that though. I just, you know, but he came up with most of the stuff that influences everyone even to this day. So it's kind of like yeah, how John Carter of Mars gave rise to Star Wars and all that stuff. You just uh, don't realize how far back a lot of stuff goes and who originated things. Hate Dad. Just so you know, a, most of the Lovecraft work is going to be coming public domain in the next few years, which is pretty good. In the questions there, Martin? Oh, nice. Sorry, what was that? Oh, I just wondered if there any other love... any, any questions. Oh, let me check. Any ask any uh... Where's Eric? Is Eric even on this show, man? What's the deal? Eric? <laughs> no, I don't even know. He's, Eric. <laughs> yeah. He's asleep. Eric. <laughs> How about Sleepy Shane? Eric? All right, I got, I got some questions here. Yeah, or Shane. <laughs> Sam's on. That's good. Okay. Yeah, we got Ben. And... <laughs> <clears throat> oh, here's here's a good one. Um. Actually, maybe we'll go around around with this one. Um, any memorable responses to your work, either good or bad? <laughs> Casey, you want to kick us off on this one? I mean, I had a pretty memorable response to your work, <laughs> be good or bad. Yeah, it could be good or bad. It could be a good memory. It could be a bad memory. <laughs> had all kinds of different experiences, I guess. Um, yeah. Like nothing, like a funny story I mean there is there's always those nice moments when like you make a kid's day at a con you know those kind of stories I mean I had a really funny response to a piece just the other day I just finished up I did that best Spider-Man homage and the guy went a little bit you know over the top in his response it was kind of funny like he had to laugh at it <laughs> so I'm like Jesus you know and sending all these emoticons and <laughs> That was kind of fun. But I think nice. my best, I like, I love that experience. I tell like a happy story, you know, like kind of counterbalance the serial killer stuff. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it be a happy story. <laughs> counterbalance. There was, um, the, the... <laughs> yeah, there's this time in Toronto, this, this kid, he, he was just a Hulk fan. And I just, you know, that was me, you know, when I was a kid, I would have loved to have gone to conventions. And yeah. And he was upset because he didn't, uh, he wanted to see the Hulk. He thought the Hulk would be at the show. Like he doesn't understand, right? He was oh, okay. really young. <clears throat> and I had these little Hulk prints and I, I, you know, I gave him one and he was just thrilled with that. But he came walking around again, like he was coming from one side and there was this guy dressed up as the Hulk, this huge guy. And he had this big Hulk costume on, like coming the other way. And they ended up meeting like right in front of the table. Like I kind of like waved him over to parents and they brought him over and it was just awesome. Like right in front of the table to have that, you know see that kind of thing happen and the kid was just you know just made his made his world you know that's so awesome seeing, seeing stuff like that was just that's not really a reaction of my work i mean it was just you know but having those kind of experiences mean a lot yeah that's just one that popped into my head but yeah very cool mike anything uh you could think of that sort of sticks out uh yeah i mean uh, there's always good and bad, I guess. Um, I don't know. Um, uh, I've been lucky to have m more good than bad, I think. But uh, <laughs> I'm not really. Uh, I'm not really sure. Uh, I think there's something that comes to mind, and uh, no, I'm. I, I'm kind of. Are you blanking on it? Brain, Sorry. brain freeze on that. Yeah, I'm it's not really good, sure, man. man. I can't really, like, uh, yeah. I've stumped the panel. I mean, panel. there's stuff I'd mentioned, but I don't want to get into the whole thing. But then there's other stuff that's just kind of like, you know, okay. that was fun. And, yeah. 
Anytime, <laughs> yeah, I mean, anytime you make someone happy with your art is a good day, I guess. But yeah. uh, sometimes you make people unhappy with your art too, I guess. So. Well, they need you... to realize art is subjective. Yes. And sure. uh, I don't have a specific story at all because, you know, honestly, most experiences I'd say have been happy when I give artwork and whatnot. But um, my my best experience ever uh, to my work was uh, it was a San Diego con and I used to live nearby. So real quick between things I was doing, I wanted to run home and uh, change clothes to come back to the show. And as I was walking a few blocks, there was a little girl in front and uh, she had a dog, like a little helper type dog and it ran off or something. So she was like running after and like, oh, that's unfortunate. You know, hope she finds oh. the dog and it ran into a local cafe on my corner. So I went, I didn't, I had to walk by the cafe. So and, uh, this old, older lady comes out. When I say old lady, I was younger. So they were old. She, when you're young, everyone's old. So uh, and she just said, oh, excuse me, are you, are you who I am? And I'm like, well, shit, I don't get noticed on the street. That's pretty uncomfortable. I don't want to be famous or anything like that. Yeah. I'm like, yes, I'm, I'm who I am. She goes, oh, I just wanted to let you know that little girl that just went in the thing is like, she loves your work and she's autistic. I think it was autistic. And uh, reading her work helped her, to, it helped her to read basically. And she, she wanted me to know it really meant a lot to her. So it's like, oh, wow. Oh, good. My, even my crappy work had some effect on someone a positive one. So I, like, I can't save a life, but I can help a, um, a young girl learn to read. So that's awesome. She probably liked the colors or something and it got her interested. I don't know. So, you know what work it was? Like which one? Oh, she didn't have a specific thing in mind that she was telling me, oh, what book? So, mm. um, mm. Yeah, yeah, it's like for her mother to come up and tell me in the street, it's like one, I'm going to remember that in the first place. Cause that's only happened a couple of times, but it's like, Oh, something actually meaning I thought I was in trouble. I was like, what wow. have I done? Like, <laughs> Someone that random you lady down on coming the up to me. I'm sorry. Because <laughs> yeah. like, apparently it meant a lot to her and it meant a lot to the daughter. So, That's so cool. that was my best reaction probably ever to my work. That's cool. Do you guys do uh, research when you're uh, doing a book? <laughs> like historical or? Yeah, any research depending on what the book is. Oh yeah, there's tons. Like that was half the job getting started with Dodge was like I had to. I had to consume as much kind of Vietnam material as I could. I watched the Ken Burns documentary. I read it to tons of books and uh, just uh, wanted to get like as authentic as I could about some of the equipment and boats and different things like that. And I tried, I don't know, there's probably a million things that someone who knew what they were talking about could pick about that's wrong that I did. But um, you know, it is, I don't feel like I can, do a job properly unless I'm, I'm kind of handling it with some sensitivity or, or some accuracy. But I have a lot of experience because I, my early in my career, I did a lot of books for Scholastic and for Rubicon Publishing, and they were all educational graphic novels. They were all like, uh, you know, English uh, as a second language, uh, you know, reader assists or, you know, just different subjects. And um, I did a lot of books like that. So, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, sorry. Just kind of had a zoned out there for a sec, but <laughs> um, to do no research. I was going somewhere with that and I forgot. Anyway, <sighs> sorry. <laughs> well, think of what you had to do for Scholastic, the research wise. Oh, there was tons, yeah. So like, I, there was books about different, you know, different wars and you know, or just different weird things. Like, um, I'm trying to think of one in particular. There was, oh, there was a very famous South American mayor who like did this. <clears throat> tremendous uh, um, work in the city that completely transformed, you know, the, the economy of the city and the, it was all super ecologically minded and I can't think of the fellow's name now. He, he died a few years ago, um, but like it was an illustrated book about him. It's a shame I can't remember it now because I had to know it really sharply then because it was getting a lot of, uh, had to go through lots of uh, levels of approval uh, before, because it was all historical stuff. So there's lots of fact checking and that kind of stuff going on. So yeah, I did lots of books like that where research was almost as much as the drawing, you know. Man. <laughs> Steven says, uh, Temple Smith walks the beach at home looking for bags of body parts for warm wood inspiration. <laughs> I did not personally find the bag of body parts. <laughs> 
It was actually several bags. <laughs> several uh... bags. <laughs> and I don't walk the beach right now because everyone out by the beach does, do not wear masks. Yeah. Because oh. they are too important, apparently. And they want to kill everyone It's else. a very big problem. It's happening here, too. Yeah. Happening here, too, man. Pretty bad. Pretty bad. Honestly, man, I was walking downtown last week to go pick up my, uh, like, I usually walk to pick up Erica after she's done work. And uh, we ended up walking. They just opened up the patios that day in Oakville. And when I got there, I noticed a Toronto news crew was there. And I thought maybe there had been a robbery or some kind of break-in or something like that somewhere because there was, like, a whole news crew and cameras and whatnot. And then I realized, no, the news crew is there just to show how doomed we all are because the yeah. patios are open. There's no space on the sidewalk. No one's wearing a mask. Everyone's sitting two feet from each other. Um, to my mind, it's a total catastrophe uh, how it's all going down. Do you guys and, like having uh, spikes there? Uh, uh, um, regional. Uh, regional yeah. spikes. Oh, so Toronto's yeah. kind of doing okay. Uh, no, Toronto's one of the spikes. <laughs> Oh, yeah, okay. Toronto's one of the worst. Yeah, yeah. Toronto, like specific areas around Toronto, like Brampton and places like that. There's a yeah. lot of spike. Yeah, the big cities. Yeah, are problems. Unfortunately, we're close enough to Toronto and Oakville here that we're basically Toronto when it comes to those kinds of region separations. So, but yeah, I can get a haircut this week finally, which will be nice because uh, I have basically have like, an entire sheep on my head. But I'm not in a big <laughs> rush to go up and uh, get a haircut because I want to. I don't get the haircuts first, you know. Get it, let everyone have go have their turn before me. It's fine. <laughs> I'm not in a big rush. Yeah, I was thinking of getting mine this week too. I thought you were going to uh, shave it eventually and make a big brush out of it. Well, I was thinking about going full zangy at least for one week and then just going Oof. and getting a regular haircut. But uh, we'll see. We'll see. There's no better time than now for the zangy hair for. Yep. You could use you could use your hair for your uh, dolls that you're gonna sell. Ah, oh, you see? There you go. Now you're thinking. I'm going to be Beethoven for Halloween, I think. <laughs> yeah, really. Eh? Oh, man. Craziness. Uh, Julian wants to know, uh, what is the best or the coolest monster to draw? The best or coolest monster to draw? Yeah. Hmm. And then it's, you know, defining like, monster, right? Like, Speaking no. in general terms of monster, or that's all I got, man. It's a comment. <laughs> that's all I got, man. <laughs> you can interpret is... it however you want. <laughs> there is no best. There is only preferred. There's only right. best. How do you no, define it's cool? Like, it's like if you said something the best, it would probably change the next day. So for me, <laughs> drawing aliens like xenomorphs are always yeah. fun. Oh, yeah. Oh, like yeah. Geiger type. Yeah, yeah. They're so difficult. Geiger or uh, like Mars Attacks? Oh, I mean like Xenomorphs. <laughs> like, yeah, the, yeah. the Giga. Apparently it's uh, Giga, not Geiger. Is it too, Giger? Oh, okay. Sorry. Somewhat. No, no, no. I'm not saying you should say though. I, I was told <laughs> that. So like, well, right, I'll go with that. But I've heard it is Giga. <laughs> uh, take it for what you will. And it's not slain. Slanya. Slanya? Slanya. Well, like, you know how you spell Sean? It's a Gaelic word, right? S E A N, and you get Sean magically. So I guess that makes sense. If it's Slain. When I met Biz, I said, "So would you draw me a Slanya?" He's like, "Slanya, ha ha." He goes, uh, "Slain, Slanya, yeah, I'll draw you Slanya." And then he drew a giant, horrible-looking penis and handed that to me. But, uh, <laughs> but I, but I love Simon. But one day I will get a, I will get he a. He gave you the, slanya. he gave you the Slanya. <laughs> Yeah, I should actually pull it out and show you what he what he drew. <laughs> whoa, whoa, hey, whoa, hey. whoa, whoa, whoa! Yeah, pull it out. <laughs> <laughs> well, you would, yeah. Our, our, our viewership digitally. just spiked, guys. <laughs> <laughs> no one wants to see that. I promise you. <laughs> but it's a nice drawing. I mean, you know, it's a Simon Bisley original, so there's that. <laughs> yep. There's what that. is it? Was it a space line? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it was a Solomnia. I think. Lamia? I miss Simon. I hope I get to see him again soon. That'd be nice. Yeah, I hope he's doing all right. Yeah. I wonder what he's working on. Or what he's doing. Oh, he's always got something cool. He's got he does heavy cool. metal stuff too, still, right? Like, 
I'd love to see him do some more stuff with Kevin Eastman, you know, some, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, I think he had some fun with uh, some of those projects they did together. Oh, am I still on? Yeah, you guys are still in? All right. Yeah, yeah. it's still, it's very faded. I'm going to go in probably and have to re, uh, reapply the black everywhere, but I just wanted to get a first kind of base coat down. Um, you can see it here. Yeah, but it's really weird. The lights, the light in my apartment's really bad too. Like I got partial fading daylight and you oh, know, super see. strong lighting, which basically washes everything out <laughs> or, uh, or no lighting at all, which is what I currently have. So that's just daylight that you got right now. <clears throat> so Paul Lemenko, who was uh, on the show a couple couple back, uh, he just sent me a message. He said he's drawing along with us and he's going to donate to his, uh, his as well. Oh, right on, man. That's awesome. Good on you, Paul. Yeah, Paul's a heck of a talent, too. Is anyone else drawing out there? Is Kyle drawing uh-huh. today? I don't know. Let's give a draw, shout out. Draw, like, draw Batman, give a shout out. Anybody uh, that's uh, drawing along with us. Yeah, anyone out there drawing along with us, man? That's cool. And uh, you know, you remember Gary, Mike? Hey, like from yeah. the Creek. He's probably drawing right now. Right on, Gary. Yeah, Gary's drawing. He draws those wicked birds of prey lately, man. And his dog portraits are great too. He did a nice Batman this week, actually. actually yeah, I he saw that one. Sit yeah, on a cool. rooftop with his mask off, like yeah, kind of defeated, oh. you know. Hard to do a bad Batman, let's be honest. Is Batman one of your go-tos when you're first starting to draw? Probably. Is that everybody's sort of go-to? Or? If I'm just doing like a headshot or something of a character, yeah, it's, it's yeah. A, lot, a, lot, a lot of time it'll be, it'll be Swamp Thing or Batman. Those are pretty, you know, the other, the other nice thing is too, is people, a lot of people collect Swamp Things and Batman, so as I've learned, so, so that's <laughs> all right too. He's that man is pretty popular. Yeah. Man, I lost the lid to my marker. This is a catastrophe. Oh, wow. Well. It landed over here. Yeah, it probably, I got it. <laughs> probably did. Biz and Eastman's fistful of blood is a guilty pleasure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There's actually a really good uh, interview uh, with Kevin Eastman on the Comics uh, Kayfabe uh, podcast that's recent. It's very good. Ed Piscor's uh, podcast. I listened to it for a bit. He talks a lot about uh, about you know working on the like he talked about the way the comic the, the Turtles comics were drawn originally and how when they came out in graphic novel form, which is how a lot of people first first read them, when they came out in color was that they actually had the, they looked so different from the original books that were black and white because they actually used a thing called a a paper called craft tint, which was a thing that you would uh, you would sketch on. Um, but it had some kind of like a hatching uh, kind of texture built into it that you'd expose by brushing on like a liquid of chemical, like a kind of a chemical liquid uh, that would expose this kind of hatching in, in different degrees, which would create the weird uh, texture. So if you look at the old Turtles, uh, you know, the old Turtles books, the original Turtles books that were black and white, they had that kind of weird hatchiness. And he was talking about that, that paper and Erica actually remembered working on uh, stuff like that before. Uh, in high school. Uh, I don't remember seeing it before, but it'd be something like zip tone, but instead of uh, rubbing it on, you're actually revealing it with brush and liquid. Uh, it activates on the paper and reveals this kind of cross-hatching tone with whatever hmm. degree you want. So yeah, that was kind of cool. And um, that's why the books look so different because before they actually did that hatch work with that craft tint, they, they photographed or scanned or photocopied all of the original inks, just the line work, so that they could preserve them when it came to colors they knew they'd be doing airbrush or whatever, so it'd be nice, clean, and bright. Um, anyway, I thought it was all interesting kind of stuff, kind of art nerdy stuff, but pretty cool. Is that how they got their blue tints as well? Like, Yeah, that that's how they paper? got that kind of effect. Yeah, that's that's the effect that I tried to get for my... Uh, yeah. my Ronin uh, cover and that's that was actually cool to have a lot of old Turtles fans kind of say like wow it's cool that you went for that retro number three uh, Turtles book which you know wasn't the original plan to be honest with you it was going to be full color but then right towards the end we decided to give it a shot and got a really good response so we went with the we went with that blue uh, yeah it was neat retro yeah. tone. that was a great great cover oh thanks really, man really great cover the color and the, the mono Thanks. Yeah. Well, everyone gets a copy of the color print. That's my gift to everyone who supported us so far. I, I did the cool. full color version and we're going to have a print available for everyone who purchased it from uh, 
bigcountrycomics.com. Here, I'll put it up real quick. Oh, thanks, man. You also yeah, have that uh, Extinction uh, cover as well. Yeah, thanks, man. Yeah. I just actually did a, something special with that today, too. So um, let me, that's let another me, that's a Kickstarter I'd love to support, actually. Uh, this one right here. Yeah, yeah, that was fun. Yeah. That's kind of the main baddie the, in that book. It's a it's a cool book. It's about uh, it's our Canadian well, I don't want to give it away, but the, the, it's got a great trailer and stuff. Um, you can check it out. But um, it takes place in uh, Prince Edward Island, so <laughs> it's uh, got some nice Canadiana elements to it. And my friends out on the east coast are gonna gonna love that. Oh, it looks great. Nice. Yeah, Kevin Stokes is the interior artist, and it was written by Stefan Nilsson, who's uh, part of Big Country Comics, but he's also a writer. He's a he was an editor at uh, Aftershock as well, but and a uh, like a art direct, but kind of my art director there. And he uh, he also um, uh, is a writer. He wrote for DC. He's written. He's had a chance to write some of his favorite characters, like Guy Gardner and you know Booster Gold and characters like that. So he's a pretty clever guy. And uh, yeah, this is a really neat comic. Yeah, this is great. I'm definitely in on this one. Thanks, man. Why did I choose to draw bricks, guys? Something wrong with me today. Let's draw a bunch of bricks, Ruth. It's so exciting to watch a guy draw bricks. Jeez, creeper. Ends on his third painting. But, <laughs> no. It's layering. Fast. Yeah, I want to get my washes going. How much time we got, Martin? How All far right. along we are? We are at 822, guys. 822. Well, when do you stop? When when does it finish? Around nine o'clock. Nine. Yeah. Nine o'clock or ten? Nine. Nine. Okay. Sorry, I didn't hear the no. audio. Oh, no problem. Uh, Julian is asking, so it's it's come back to Batman. Uh, which Batman villain is your favorite, and which is your favorite to draw? Hmm. Oh, it could be the same, I assume. That'd be the cla the Joker. In both cases? Yeah. It's, yeah. It's hard, hard to go past him for a villain. He's pretty a great villain. <laughs> I find the Joker real tricky to draw, to be honest with you. And um, I, uh, I think I draw an okay Joker, but I, uh, I prefer the more monstery kind of character. So for me, my favorite Batman villain is probably Joker, but my favorite one to draw um, is probably like Clayface or... Huh. Um, or, or I like drawing Bane. I like drawing uh, KG Beast. That's not a request I get very often, but I like that character. Um, yeah. And, and, and you know what? For a headshot, for a fun, just like, you know, uh, if I want to just jump on and do like a live sketch, like Two-Face is always great for that because Two-Face is going to have <clears> so <throat> much fun with the Harvey Dent character. Like there's so much you can do with that. So I'd have to go with Joker as well. But I mean, like, if I don't pick him, it would, like, maybe Mr. Freeze. I don't know. Oh, yeah, Mr. Done. Freeze. He, yeah, he's he can so do a lot of too. good visual stuff That's for cool. Scarecrow. For sure. Like, Scarecrow ben does a fun. killer Mr. Freeze. I've seen Ben's Mr. Freeze. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, like, like, I appreciate that, but thank you. He's fun. And, like, I'd have to do him a few more times to get a grapple on him, I think. He's yeah, fun. Like, I haven't fun. figured he's him like, out, but there's so much potential there. Yeah. I love that Mignola, like uh, um, Kevin Nolan design from the animated series. Like, yeah, um, that, I love that. That that's my favorite look. Not, uh, not the Schwarzenegger movie. look. <laughs> no. <laughs> Freeze. Nice to see you. Freeze. <laughs> that was the best. <laughs> I watched Blade last night. I forgot how awesome that movie was. Yeah. Blade first. The first one, yeah. I don't know that I've seen any of the sequels, but I, I, I rewatched the first one last night. Wasn't Triple H on one of them? The he was in the third one, one right? Yeah. <laughs> Apparently the third one makes the other two suck. It's so bad. But uh, <laughs> like it takes, actually diminishes the entire That takes line. a special movie to do that. <laughs> to make, movie, to make yeah, it even it worse. Takes, uh, yeah. But they were the best. Like They came out around the time of the first X-Men stuff, didn't they? Um. Like, yeah. Oh, before. before I think the first the first blade was uh was ninety eight I believe. Yeah. So I think it came yeah, out I just guess before. it'd be around that time. Yeah. 
Like, I think X-Men was already out by the time Blade 3 came around. Uh, Paul wants to know, is there a certain character you'd like to do in a 6 to 12 issue miniseries? Hmm. No. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, you're not allowed to say the thing or Swamp Thing. Uh, okay. um, I would like to do... Um, uh, only six yeah. or twelve pages, though. Uh, no uh, issues. Oh, six or twelve issues. Yeah. yeah. Well, for me, it'd be the Hulk. I'd have to do the Hulk. The Hulk. the Hulk. Yeah, the Hulk would be cool. I would like to do. Uh, I don't know, man. That's a good question. I think I'd like to do like a Thunder the Barbarian comic in six issues, or uh, oh, yeah. actually, no. I just want a one. I just want a one issue for that. I think maybe I'll do like. Um, I don't know. You know, that's a good question. Care Judge Bears. Dredd, maybe? Uh, I have to draw the motorcycle a lot, though. I'm kind of lazy. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't normally do more than four issues on a miniseries, so... Yeah. That would be a Six lot feels more. a little meaty. <laughs> I'd, still, I'd still do Lobo. Lobo. Still be Lobo, or just something of my own. <clears throat> so... Because I've done everything I wanted to do, really. So now it's all just for fun. What but the real of, answer uh, is, if I was asked to do almost anything, I'd probably say yes if I was going to be paid for it. <laughs> well, almost anything, because it's still about, well, like drawing tech or drawing crowd scenes or cityscapes a lot or, you know, some's yeah. more hard than others. So, I got my notes on what the next issue, uh, the, next, uh, the next cover for Dodge is going to be that I'm drawing, and I'm pretty excited about it. So uh, that'll be fun. Oh, that's great. Doing an homage. I hate doing homages, but it's an homage to like, I don't know. It's kind of a perfect, it's kind of a perfect cover to homage for, for Dodge. So should be good. I think you guys will like it. The fans of this podcast will like it. Hmm. That's a hint. <laughs> what to do? What to... Oh, can I show off something for a sec that I'm kind of proud of? Yes. Oh, look at that, though. Let's look at Ben's drawing for a minute. Good no, I dog. just spat on my work. Oh, I just got these in the mail. This is my... Uh, ah. This is uh, Red Nails. This is my Sumerian cover. Nice. Um, I just got my comps in the mail from Big Country Comics. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of cool to see a Conan thing, even though it's not the Marvel Conan. It's, it's kind of cooler in a way because it's actually pulling from the Robert E. Howard stuff that was actually translated into French at the at Glenot Publishing and then brought back and translated back to English if for, uh, for a Blaze uh, publication. So, uh, yes, and this is also, uh, if I could do a quick pitch, it's also available at Big Country Comics, where you can also find my last Ronin cover. But, uh, yeah, this just came in the mail today, and I've been waiting a long time for this because this, we had just got this in kind of when the pandemic broke out, so we didn't know if it was even going to happen. So it was pretty cool to finally see it physically in my hands. That's that's awesome, man. Actually, I'll I'll put the uh, the site up very quick. You're living the dream, Mike. There you are. It felt Never like a drawn Conan. Conan Look, man. there's actually a Mike Ruth uh, tab here. What? There you are. Oh, there is. Look at that. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Oh, you sold out. Some, oh, you sold out your pestilence. Weapon. There you are. Red nails. Yeah, there it is. And I do apologize the shipping is so high, but I promise you that is, it's just Canada, man. That's just shipping in Canada. It's a nightmare. And uh, it's a nightmare even to send it amongst our own people here in this country. So it's, uh, it's just an unfortunate thing. If you want the comic to get there with any kind of guarantee of, uh, of uh, you know, insurance and safety, then, you know, it's just the only option, unfortunately, the high cost of shipping. Um, a lot of these were going to be only available at conventions. That was the plan. The whole tour was canceled, of course, because of COVID. But that was the plan. That that this book was specifically created to be a conventions only uh, uh, purchase. So um, kind of unfortunate, but you can get it on the website. So uh, now it's a COVID it's only. Much. Yeah. Pandemic special. Pandemic <laughs> special, exactly. I mean, it's a it's a it's a time in history, so you may as well make it like, oh yeah, this was the uh, the thing yeah. for that thing. Yeah, it influenced. It's it true. Influence, yeah, it's for true. sure. Yeah. Yeah. Very curious when we look back five years from now. Yeah. Hopefully, it's over. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, it won't be unless we have a vaccine, I think. Mm -hmm. yeah, oh, hey, Eric up. chimed in, saying good evening, gentlemen. Ah, he's awake. He's awake. Hey, Eric. <laughs> what up, Eric? Thanks for joining us. You should be on uh, the show, though. Dalton says, uh, Mike, that's crazy. Whoa, mama. <laughs> You're liking your cover. <laughs> Whoa, mama. Oh, oh mama. Oh, I could be pronouncing my. that wrong. There's your reaction from earlier that you wanted. There you are. <laughs> Highlights. <is>, yeah. <laughs> the COVID highlight moment. Oh, mama. <laughs> so uh, what's the first thing you guys are going to do when this is over? Anything you're really missing or jonesing for at this point? Just want to see people. A proper visit with my family. A proper visit with my family where I get to like actually, you know, hug my mom and dad, um, visit my grandmother. That's definitely coming up very, very, uh, very soon. I hope, I hope mm -hmm. that day can come, uh, uh, that kind of stuff, you know, the real, the real important stuff that we can have, that's, that's what we do. Ben, what about you? Anything in particular? Cut off? I haven't really thought that far ahead, except for all the food I miss of going to uh, restaurants easily. So, you know, as long as I'm not worried about people dying, like my f friends and family, then uh, that's the next thought. It's like, whoa, all the food I haven't eaten in a very long time. The, the simple little things, you know? Yeah. yeah. My, my family are in Australia, so I'm not going to just pop on back instantly. It can still mm. cost a fair bit of money, so... And I don't yeah. think travel, even if things are better, travel is still going to be a, a nightmare for a while after that. Absolutely. Yeah. So. Yeah. I'll stick with some sushi. <laughs> oh, I'm dying. I'm dying for a good sushi. <laughs> yeah. I'm with you. I want to take Eric out for breakfast. It's been a long time since I've been able to wipe out for breakfast. Yep. That's something that, you know, a week or every two weeks it was always kind of a nice thing to you know it's uh yeah it's just a little stuff you know little things well it's like when you when you work hard you set yourself these little little treats when you accomplish something mm -hmm. and they're mostly taken away from us right now so it all piles up you know it's like well, mm -hmm. it's a first world problem but having brunch with your wife is kind of like a nice thing yeah but it's yeah. it's still it's still important I yeah, mean, it keeps you going. Yeah. Mentally, yeah. Uh, you know, mentally. Again, it, you know, back to that whole art conversation, it's it's what makes life worth living, really. <laughs> the little things. I would say food is art as well. Like the creating of the dishes and the cultural aspect. It's like people express themselves through food and we live and die by food. Like, you know, good food is an event. Yep. Casey, so yes. that's Who looking are those great. people on that article? I want to find that article. Thank you. I'm going to write them an angry letter. <laughs> I'm going to tweet it, it for you. I'm going to tweet. I know. Uh, was there, I saw it on Richard Pace's page. Yeah, okay. he shared it. It was. Yeah, I saw. I think I saw it earlier in the day it, on Twitter somewhere. It made the rounds. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, it definitely did. Yeah, it was probably some insignificant it was thing. <laughs> it, was, it was infuriating. <laughs> But, but yeah. it was infuriating, but it was so stupid that it's like you can't really, you know, it doesn't it doesn't hold up a value. But uh, so it was a whole internet thing or a Canadian thing. Uh, I don't know that it actually was a Canadian thing. It, I it might have been. So. I it was shared by yeah. I'll I don't, find I don't know it. for sure though. We'll do a whole show on it. Just you should get it's angry. A, it's a philosophical question. We'll just get angry at it. <laughs> Why the world is wrong. Yes. So I wanted to ask our viewers a question, actually, if anyone okay. is listening. Turn in the how tables. Would you, how, would you, uh, how would you feel? What are your thoughts on uh, doing a week where we do a schedule mania, where we each either pick all the same thing or pick different uh, other creators that we're going to support? Like, so like we'd have one week where maybe it's Kickstarter where we have like 
our favorite people who have Kickstarters going at the time, you know, the winning bidder on our artwork can take that money and just apply it to that person's Kickstarter, which might be the thing that makes the project funded or helps get them over a hump or helps get people, you know, talking about the project. Um, I don't know that it was the right tone uh, right now, but I just wondered if it was something that people would be interested in doing. Um, you know, we basically each championed a different, a different creator's uh, project. Because creators have been giving a lot, I think, during this time, just further to that article discussion. And I think that, you know, it's a small way of maybe, maybe giving some back to the creators, you know? Or does that sound weird? I think it's great. Anyway, that's a question. I, I listen, a, I'll, any, any way I can help, Mike, I'll do it for sure. We'll make it happen. Weird. We'll make it happen. It's I'm also gonna, weird. I'm going to buy, buy my computer <laughs> clippers. <laughs> Uh, Richard Pace says his ears were ringing just a second ago. <laughs> Richard, you started the rage. I think Richard wrote that article, actually. <laughs> yes. Yeah, maybe it was Richard's article. <laughs> Richard's article. <laughs> John with art. <laughs> you turn coat, Pace. Oh, <laughs> tragic i'm gonna sweat so on yeah things. people people are like an idea um fantastic okay. idea i think it's great for the arts and the medium overall uh, yeah i think you got a winner mike okay people are digging i want to see what the feeling was on that but i like the idea of doing a whole like a separate event for that like yes yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 promote it that way yes yeah. we, we could definitely I think do that fine. and then, then it's up to the people if they want to put their yeah. money towards it right yeah yeah i'm down uh, I'm down okay. to do one. We could even call it something different if you want. No, no, we can, you know, it can still have the same, whatever. Yeah, we'll figure it out, man. I'm easy. Yeah. Well, uh, we'll announce it soon. Yeah. <laughs> we have well, the next, uh, we have the next one lined up already, but we'll, we'll announce that very soon as well. It's going to be it's very not far huge. off from doing that, uh, like creators, you know, like comics for creators and all that that we were doing, like helping the stores. It's not that different, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, exactly. It's just, it's just, a, uh, you know, like it's tough, man. Like doing a Kickstarter is tough and not everyone, you know, I, I was very lucky. I had a very successful one, you know, for Dodge, the recent one. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, there's, it's not an easy thing. Like it's not an easy thing to do and to fulfill and to go through. And you got, you know, this case, you just from, mm -hmm. you know, from, from cauldron and ben knows this for sure from the great success he's had at his Kickstarters as well so it's a, it's a big job it's a full-time job and sure. those are real other stories on that man what's that <laughs> you know i have a whole nother story on that <laughs> oh yeah i do yeah, yeah. <laughs> make sure if you do a kickstarter make sure the money goes to your bank account if your name's on the kickstarter so, uh, oh dear okay yeah yeah business partner hmm I was left in a lot yeah. of debt, and I'm still figuring that one out. So, oh, that's the worst. Kickstarters are great, just so long as you know you yeah, get the money. As long as everyone's usually, yeah, yeah. It's the spirit of the Kickstarter. <laughs> mm -hmm. That was a uh, special level of scumbaggery that went down, though. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It was. Uh, I'm, um, I won't go into the whole thing, but I used to be part of a thing called Forty Four Flood. Well, we we all were. And uh, the other. Oh yeah. Oh, look, yeah. Uh, it is what it is. I should have. I was should have been less trusting, but uh, and we shouldn't have done the Kickstarter using my account, even though it was my project. But uh, yeah, in the end, the money ran out long before we came to shipping the book. So we're doing a lot of the rewards. So I had to foot the bill myself, and I'm still footing the bill. So you don't really recover from good. seventy, somewhere between seventy and ninety thousand dollars all up. So. Oh. That's oh yeah, it's taken years, man. I'm a little oh. bit. I've only got a little bit left to go, I think, and then I can just going to re refund the last couple of hundred people. I think it is. And there is no way to do legal action, like. I mean, I, that's I, a big amount. You'd have to get an accountant and be legal, and like that's going to cost me even more money, and I'm I don't have it. So. Yeah. He left. Yeah. He made sure he left the company before I realized uh, what a shithole I was in. <laughs> Yeah, because we were just yeah. happy he was gone at that point because he'd made it so tough to deal with anything. So, but you know that was when the bank account was dry, and I never realized that until too late. So, oh well. 
Yeah, the legal thing. Like, my name's on the thing. I'm responsible, so I got to wear it. The legal thing is very tricky. Um, I, I mean, I, I won. I won something a while back, and mm -hmm. there's one thing to win something, but then there's another thing to actually collect the money collect. afterwards on top yeah. of it. <laughs> Yeah. I could never collect the money. Like he's not going to have the money. That the problem was how he treated money. You just have to yeah. be careful who you go in business with. That's the end. Of, at the end of the day. Yeah. yeah, that's fair. I do like this idea. I, I I even think um, it would be pretty cool to have some of the creators on if they want to come on and chat about it for a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. The show's evolving, guys. It's always evolving. Yeah, it is. It's good i mean I'm, I'm glad we're getting the i'm grateful to everyone who's listening right now and everyone who comes back every week like it's it's great you know um it's awesome i i think i do need to take a break unfortunately in in july uh for a few episodes just because i have uh i got a couple of projects that are gonna keep me hopping and um evening seem to be the coolest i'm finding it really difficult to work in the heat and uh so i'm doing a lot of the hands-on inking and drawing at night where it's a little bit cooler because it's a it's a pretty major factor, and you know it's a yeah. Yeah, you gotta work <laughs> when you can. No. Yeah, it's just a tough time to work in the heat. I'm not I'm not built for the heat. Well, we're we're screwed because I I used to live in an apartment in New York with no air conditioning, but I could still go to the Starbucks or something down the street to get some relief. But you can't do that right now, nope. really. So you. are we're just starting, I think, like malls yeah, and things right are just now. starting oh, to open yeah. up. Yeah, but but yeah, even now, like you have to line up yeah. outside. But I'm not the time. Well, I'm. I don't know that I'm. I'm ready. I don't know that I'm there yet. Frankly, like even if everything opened up tomorrow, like full full yeah. blast, I I'm definitely not there. Uh, yeah. Where I'm at in my head, and you know, with normal space <laughs> these days. So uh, yeah. yeah. So. Um. I hope I get back to it. I actually cracked the other day and got an Uber Eats for a, yeah. a Frappuccino. <laughs> and it was glorious. Uh-oh, I think we lost Mike. Oh, oh he's no. getting choppy. But... Is... Uh, he might be trying to reconnect. I think he's playing mind games. Oh, he's coming back. Oh, oh you're back? You Did I cut it? Yeah. yeah, you cut out. Oh, sorry. Oh. It's a little choppy, but... It'd be great uh, to see was, Shane Amato again. Uh, so yes, yes, we'll have to bring Shane back for sure. Yeah. Is he watching or no? He's not. He probably is. He's probably just... Uh, He's still been working a lot walking. through this whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. But, Ben, it's great you could join us this time around for sure. Well, thanks for having me, man. I'm just trying to yeah. figure out because this is my, this is a mirror of what this actually is. <laughs> I'm trying to flip my damn camera. Oh, I think, yeah. <laughs> I think it is just for you. I think it is for you, but I think we yeah. can see yeah. it properly. Wait, yeah. he's really right-handed. Okay. <laughs> my left hand, right? You can see. Like, yeah, that right. messed me up too the first time. Left uh, hand, right? Yeah, yep. I'm trying to. So I just hope it looks good mirrored as well. Anyway, so. I think I'm mostly done. So that looks fantastic. Let's have a look. Oh my god! Zoom in. Oh. Yeah, that's bananas. Oh look wow. at the long gauntlet. I love it. Crazy. Oh, wow. now I can see the see it the right way. They're not too bad. Now I can do that's some more. That's great. Well, thank you. I like the red trail off of the uh, the eye. It looks great. I made him slightly like, you know, vampiric -y or whatever. So <laughs> why not have red eyes, right? I was going to give him red eyes. <laughs> I knew it. I should have done the DK. Dark Knight Returns. So that's going to be Michael Keaton <laughs> returning, I guess, to the films in the Flashpoint story. So is he going to be playing the Thomas Wayne? Uh, that's Batman? right. I, that's the rumor. That's fantastic. Yeah. I thought he was great as Batman. I like I mean the he was limited by that costume, but the uh I thought he was good. Are they still using uh Ezra Miller? I guess so, right? I don't know. 
Because didn't he get into some trouble with the video that came out? Uh, what what, sure, did he, to be what did he do? He uh, apparently some. <laughs> Um, I, I did see it. It was, it was kind of odd. Uh, apparently some fan came up and hugged him and he kind of playingly threw her down. What? <laughs> I know. It, it, I, I he threw her down. Kind of. Yes. That's not going to look good. To me. But it yeah, was like, uh, 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 but it was all like, it wasn't like, it didn't seem like to hurt her or anything, but it was kind of, it was, it was really odd. You, you have to see the video, but there was huh. a lot of, uh, <laughs> yeah this was during the the pandemic as well or no this was before this was, oh, okay yeah yeah so i was gonna say maybe he was you know self-defense it's like no stay away virus person yeah no no <laughs> yeah it was it was it was really odd I'm, I'm sure you could find it on youtube but it's uh yeah because it was weird. kind of done playfully but it was weird anyway hmm mm. So there was, there was, yeah, there was a lot of, you know, and of course the, the internet jumped on that right away for sure, which, hey, you know, um, yeah, it's been a week of, uh, internet, hasn't it? Yeah. Uh, it's not over yet. <laughs> not over yet. Nope. Yes. I mean, disappointing. It'll be over. it's really disappointing. Very sad to hear about Denny O'Neill, um, as yeah. well. I don't think I ever met him, so. No. It was sad. Yeah, I never met him. Uh, pretty important guy. Yeah, he was really nice. I, I met him briefly in Toronto when he came here. <laughs> yeah, he was a guest of honor a couple years ago, I think. Yeah, yeah. I was very happy that I got to meet Will Eisner two times before uh, he passed away. Uh, so, oh, wow. wow that's I wish I met him. Man. I, I don't know how I rigged it or it happened, but I got to do a panel with him for some strange reason. Wow. He was sat next to me. Yeah, he spilt water on me. He, he, uh, <laughs> he knocked, he knocked the, the, the glass of water right on my lap. <laughs> it was not a problem. I'm not complaining. It was a memory. It was like, <laughs> 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 uh, threw it, spilt the drink on me. Go, Eisner. Yeah. <laughs> so that guy was a class act. So, yeah, as far as I know, he's great. Oh yeah. yeah. I like oh, I like the moon there, uh, Mike. That's cool. Oh, I'm trying something else. I'm not sure that I'm gonna go with a different material, but uh, thank you. I like Let's the glinting. Goes. The glinting, the the highlight. <laughs> I'm no good at that. You're good. I'm not good. S Sam Noir wants to know about uh, Casey's Will Eisner's original art. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You have a couple of Eisner sketches, eh? Yeah. yeah. Do you? I was, just got him in New York last year. Um, well, I wish I could have met him. I felt like I, I appreciated him too late, you know, I, I think I did a too. lot of guys and uh, I, I really appreciate him now. Like I've, you know, read his books and um, like shop talk and all that too. Not just the sequential art stuff. Um, you know, watched a lot of videos on it. Like, I feel like I, I would have really liked it. Um, but yeah, I was uh, in New York there, like on, on the same mile we were in in Artist Alley, um, Dennis Kitchen had a booth set up. And he's basically like, you know, Eisner's surrogate son in a way. Like, he's in charge of Eisner's estate with the art, like the mm. comic stuff. Um, like, so the family basically priced it out and then uh, Dennis is kind of in charge of it. Um, so he's, he looks after selling it and whatever, but he, um, so the one morning I went over, I wanted to say hi to meet him and, and just, you know, say, you know, how kitchen sink influenced me and things like that. And, um, his wife was there and I ended up talking to her for a while. And I see this tiny little sign on the table, original Eisner art for sale. And I'm like, what, you know, like, is this like, you've got stuff here? She's like, oh yeah, we got a couple of portfolios of his, his work and. Like, would that be okay if I take a look, you know, <laughs> and I'm looking at, uh, you know, so I'm just drooling, like going through these portfolios of Eisner stuff. Um, I, and it was like smaller stuff. So anything, you know, 12 by 18 and under, and they, I guess Dennis had tons of, you know, the bigger oversized pages, like the, the, the spirit newspaper stuff and all that. 
Um, yeah, so, and the prices were so reasonable because I guess the family priced it out a while back and it's never really changed. And so I ended up grabbing a couple, uh, a couple originals there. And I thought that was kind of, I didn't get to meet him, but it was like kind of that making that connection, you know, with, with someone I, uh, you know, I, I, I owe the guy a lot in a way. Mm. So it was kind of that nice having that. And it, it was nice drawings too. Like one is a, this kind of pencil sketch of the spirit walking down the street. Oh, cool. And it's just, you know, it's got that, you know, you, you know exactly it's the spirit and everything like it, but it's got that kind of haunting kind of feeling to it. And another one is a, a page of just inked uh, characters making all different gestures, like these, these paired off people making gestures to each other. It was, I guess for That's one cool. of his classes or something, it was, yeah, just a couple of really nice pieces. And then, uh, yeah, what a, like just incredible, like to have something like that. Yeah, a couple of prized possessions. For sure. That was like uh, when I met Bernie Wrightson. Yes, met him yeah. too, like that, yeah, same kind of thing. I, I don't have uh, any originals, but yeah. I actually have a... Uh, I went to his table. He was the nicest guy. Um, <laughs> I wanted him to do a commission, but I guess he wasn't doing them at that point. But um, he did have some of his work there, and I and I flipped through it. And I'm actually a big Stephen King fan as well. And uh, he had some of his warm up sketches for some of the <laughs> illustrations he did on the uh, the Dark Tower oh, series. Oh, nice! And uh, he he was he sold me one. So nice. Do you remember the crazy uh, drawings he did for the, um, it was the, I think the graphic novel version of uh, Silver Bullet, the movie, I think it was called. Oh, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, like, Hour of the Werewolf or, or something like that. But, uh, oh, my God, they were just the most crazy Bernie Wrightson drawings. Yeah, just just so crazy. I got a set of his like, uh, prints. Or something? Yeah. I got a set of his prints from that. They're great. Nice. I remember having Bernie Wrightson uh, cards, that art card set. I had uh, I had a bunch of those. I think I tried to get to get you to go meet him too, Mike. Do you remember that? Yeah, I think you were. You and I got it at uh, Swamp Thing print, right? Yeah. Well, you had a Swamp Thing print, and I was like, "Whoa, where'd you get that?" And you're like, "Oh yeah, I got it over there." I'm like, "Who's selling Bernie Wrightson stuff?" And you were like, "Bernie Wrightson." <laughs> <laughs> he was so was hidden, some right? guy ripping him off. Go, go tell yeah. me. And over, I ran over to the table, and he had already torn down for the day. And I was like, "Oh, he's back tomorrow, but that's okay." And then, like the next day, I went to go see him, and he had already he was gone for the weekend. Uh, uh, so it was just like uh, I had missed him. So it was a real shame. Yeah, it's so hard to get away from the table and stuff too. Like that, like, it is. Yeah, but that usually means hidden. that's usually for a good reason. That's usually if you're busy. Yeah, you know, I, I always lament that I don't get to visit my friends because I'm usually like you know drawn the whole time. But like, it's uh you know that yeah. that's that's why you're that's why I'm there. You know, it's uh unfortunately that's that's <laughs> the main reason I'm there is to work and the work gets done at the table. So yeah, yeah. Guys, do you mind if I show uh, Paul's really quick? He'd finished his oh, up. Oh, yeah, I got to see. He's finished? Yeah. yeah. Here. Oh, wow. my God. Oh, what? That's crazy, dude. Wow, Paul. Holy moly. Yeah, he crazy. wins. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I guess Paul wins. I guess that's it. Eleven. <laughs> by, it's, a, it's on an 11 by 17 as well. Okay. <laughs> How dare you, Paul? <laughs> Sorry, that's great. So we'll have this one up for auction as well. Jeez. Well, wow. I should add, by the way, I normally work relatively small. So I, I actually work American letter size or like A4-ish for most of yep. my, my pages and whatnot. So that's the size I normally work at. So that's what this is. Wow. 11 by 17 usually end up taking me a lot, lot longer. So plus great. I'm not used to the perspective thing. So Things just turn out better when I work on my normal size. So that's why this one's a little small. It's not, it's just normal for me. Do you do that for comic pages as well? Like, yeah. Like with that size? Yeah. That's, that's where I, it first started. And I'm like, oh, this is much easier and manageable and I can get stuff done quickly. So, and then I learned like Charlie Adlard for the, did, does it for The Walking Dead. So I was like, oh yeah, working small has its benefits. Huh. If you can still make it look relevant enough. I mean. I don't think I realized you work small. That's cool. Well, the reason people do it big is so that when you shrink it down a bit, 
it tightens up and yeah. you know, it looks more detailed. So if you can try and, if it works anyway, you know, you don't have to. In theory. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm good. I'm just saying what I do. <laughs> I know Spiegelman, when he did Mouse, he worked like the, the size that the book is. Like he wanted hmm. it to be as intimate and close to the reader as he could get and he made it right. to, to his work that size. Hmm. I always thought that was kind of a neat idea. Like, I always like working larger just because I don't think my eyes are what they used to be. And I, I find like, uh, you know, I like to be able to work at a comfortable size, especially when drawing lots of things like that turtles cover that I did has like 30 characters on it and they get smaller and smaller. So I wanted to be able to have the smallest one still be able to draw them without having to use a magnifying glass, you know? Um, Cause I like to ink everything by hand, you know, at the end of the day, I'd like to make all my original art for covers, uh, is uh is always you know it's always ink on paper so um i might pencil it digitally just to get to that you know to get to that stage um but yeah anyway blah 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 blah, blah. here i'll show my crappy one really quick oh you drew one good yeah some jean paul valet <laughs> nice oh nice Ezreal. from a non-drawer i can't see it for some reason Why not? oh sorry am i not on gallery view there, oh, it's nice. better. Oh, yeah. Cool. There we are. That's good, man. I always kind of dug his. I mean, it's very 90s, but I always dug his uh, his outfit. It's kind of cool. Yeah, it was a pretty violent Batman. I, uh, pretty crazy storyline. I um, I love the costume design, actually. It's just so crazy. Yeah. Like, I'd like to yeah. see it done properly in the film one day, you know? Yeah. What time are we at now? Are we out of time? Uh, we're actually three minutes in. Uh, or sorry, three minutes to the nine. Um, oh, so we okay. should probably do a little bit of a spotlight on each of the. Uh... <laughs> I think I should fake some effects like that. I'm going to eventually do. I just got all the stuff lying around. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> all right. Um, you want to show yours, sir, Casey? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Looks good. Too I'm bad. It's down. going. <laughs> Casey, flip it. it. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to do things to it. I'm going oh, to get nice. the red eyes. Good, man. Oh, the right light on. is crazy. Hang on. Very cool. Let's see if I can... Uh, this might make a difference. What was the else oh, Worlds with him? Blood Rain or something? Blood was Rain, yes. I think that was it. Well, there was, yeah, like the trilogy that Kelly Jones did where he was a vampire. Oh, yeah. Kelly Jones' fun. Batman is so definitive, man. That was... Uh, yeah, it know, made no like, sense, but it was great. Yeah, and anatomy made no sense, but it was just so crazy. He had like ten thousand abs and it just just obscene, obscenely hugely muscled, but I, I loved it. It was so good. Yeah. Really cool. All right. All right, Mike, what you got? Wow. Yeah, you win. No, I don't win. That's ridiculous. I'm sorry, it's so super... wild on that red paper. It was this. Yeah. Yeah, it'll, yeah, it'll be works. we all boosted up black. I'm gonna go over black everything again with a, with a brush, but uh and now you're seeing a weird shadow on the moon there, but it's going to be a solid white moon and just a bit of white highlight on them, and that's it. So, uh, yeah. And it's that's 11 awesome. by 17 on uh, red paper. So I'll post the proper scan when we're all done. There's not enough bricks. Yeah, I probably need <laughs> some more bricks. More bricks. <laughs> well, Mike, where's the rest of the city? <laughs> I'm so lazy, though, guys. I'm super lazy. <laughs> all right. And Ben, Big Ben Templesmith. Yeah, wow. that, that's just so crazy. That's beautiful. It's a cover. I don't really right? see that yeah, there's some texture on it, so it's like oh. it's not really in focus, but I think you got a future in comics. I do. <laughs> uh, I did at one point, man. I did at one point. You're so naturally <laughs> talented. <laughs> what comics are you drawing these days? Can you talk about any of them, Ben? Do you have anything you're working on that's like um, your own that you can talk about yet or uh I'm just working on um, w Wormwood Gentleman Corpse, which is my creator-owned book. Nice. Uh, everything I've been doing is just been doing on my Patreon, but I haven't really put them out outside of that yet. So I have a bunch of finished things that I've yet to put out. So, but they will go through the Patreon. So people there have been seeing stuff and awesome. So about to get they, some stuff printed up. Do they usually go to Patreon first and then they get released, yeah. or like, is there sort of a timed uh, really? exclusive there? Well, ideally, the theory is uh, my Patreon is where people watch me make the book. Mm. 
Uh, they'll get a they'll get a digital copy no matter what. And if they've backed me at enough or want to buy it later on at a discount, they get to, to buy a physical copy if I can make a physical copy of whatever I'm doing. Uh, and then ideally, if I can write the ship on the old Kickstarter, I can um, crowdfund a collection of that, which is still only a small run because they're very small runs on the Patreon. They're like 100, maximum 500 copies. And then uh, then see if... Uh, Someone in the direct market wants to wants to print it. Oh, nice. very cool. We'll keep an That's eye out the for theory. that for sure. I have about <laughs> I have about four plan. finished projects. I've yet to take through the process yet, but um, yeah, Winwood has to go through IDW no matter what, really. So, excellent. Okay, guys. So uh, so next steps is we'll get a picture uh, posted up. I'll post it up tomorrow on the Fastball Special uh, page on Facebook, uh, which will be the official auction. I'll take the highest bids that have come in. There's been many bids done uh, on the uh, comments already. Uh, so it looks like they're doing very well. Um, and then we will uh, reach out to the winners by noon on Thursday, Eastern Standard Time, and ask them to donate to the various uh, charities. And uh, the highest Ooh. bid will get these awesome pieces of art. That's great. So That's thanks, sweet. thanks everyone. Uh, thanks, Mike, for coming back again five times in a row. You're a champ. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for having me, man. It's always fun. Thanks, Ben, for for flying in from Seattle. I appreciate You're very it. Very welcome. <laughs> Definitely hate flying, but yeah. I'll start working on my lefty. Um, no, and, correct me. <laughs> and Casey, thank you again. Hey, thanks for having me again. It was thanks, great. Thanks, all, thanks, Paul, for also donating his piece yeah. and all the folks that are also drawing. I think Julian yeah. mentioned he was drawing as well. Uh, so right post on. your drawings up, man, and, and we'll put them on the site. Great job. Thanks, everyone. Okay. Thank you, Cheers. Everyone. Thanks, everyone. Hope to see you next time. Thank you.